So, Corey, you would be first on my list of weary travelers. Uh, Why me first? Where's your character? <laughs> Lost in the mist. Lost in the mist. Mayfer, right? Yes, sir. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Dicewise Entertainment's Simply Second Edition. Sure. I am your co-host, GM Jeff Ball, and tonight your host is... Oh, me. <laughs> Robert, <laughs> over here. Over here. Oh, yeah, you are. Rob Hammond is our GM tonight. I get to take a back seat and run some tech. We also have our cast of players. We have a few familiar faces. Mr. Joe Gibson, who is our rules lawyer, one of our trigger men in our Friday night, 8 p.m., Dark Galaxies Gaming Twitch stream of Age of Ashes for Pathfinder 2nd Edition. We also, uh, my right-hand man lately, Mr. Rob Hammond, is taking that we're doing a little swap of chairs. He's a DM. I'm just running tech, and I get to play. Very excited about that. An old, 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 well, actually our young, <laughs> young, young, <laughs> Jared. Jared Mercer. No relation. Hey. <laughs> is in the house here. Hey, Nickname uh, Nick Jared the Intern um a fan turn regular because i invited him to sit in on game once to get that fan experience and he just never left so here he what is tonight <laughs> but uh technically our fantasy grounds expert if you compare his knowledge to the rest of us as we're still learning so a crucial part of the crew and last but not least uh an old gaming buddy of mine a guy i knew in high school and here's a guy who agreed without my knowing to go down to somebody's basement and sit in a special position on a couch that was engineering. And the guy next to him, another buddy was weapons. And a guy next to him was this. And the other guy over there and they call me up saying, Hey, yeah, we're just gonna have a movie or whatever. And I was always damning back in that day. And I come down and they're all smiling at me in like star Trek positions. And we're going to play Robotech and they pull out the chair and they're like, and you get to be captain. And I've never played. And I was like, yeah, Mr. Corey Shazon is in the house tonight good evening ladies and gentlemen now we are going to have a go at this eyes through Corey, because let's say that he hasn't played an rpg tabletop in how many years oh a long long time 20 odd years something like that yeah <laughs> something like the last time we actually went my anecdote uh new to streaming but luckily he is actually in the studio live with me tonight um and another computer expert who like literally ran over here and showed me how to push some buttons and I learned so much so fast in 30 seconds. So everybody here is an integral part. Welcome to Twitch TV forward slash the GM's cut where we're going to give it to you raw and there's going to be story. There's going to be role playing, but you know, we might slow things down here and there to show you as we learn how to play second edition, how to wrap our head around fantasy grounds. Please don't take this a technical um faults on our part listen learn back to you rob oh well for me okay as i was saying um the caravans and the freight routes that are, are along this place like i said always pick up during the time uh, the call of heroes just because it's a great there's so many people on their way through um now That's they don't generally a lot of people for yes sorry where are we you Oh yeah, I'm, I'm going to be that guy. <laughs> no, 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 no. I haven't freaking gamed in years. I've been DMing so long. Just, Actually, just consider my hand up like the whole time. You're about 15 miles south of where he is right now. There is the shelf of burned out tavern, which is where you were headed because when you hit the road, they said, oh, don't worry. Go go, go see that tavern on your way there. They'll, they'll put you up. You get there and the damn place is burned to the ground. Oh, crap. So we're just kind of looking at it. We are playing second edition. We are playing on the world of Galorian. The year is 4719. We are yes. in the country of Iskar? Well, we're just south of Iskar. Just south of Iskar, which is like Andoran, right? Yeah, it's contested territory more map. or less. <laughs> a map on the wall. <laughs> Look Jeez. at the map, Corey. <laughs> it's a map we over there. Tend, wow, we all tend that's to a big map. Map. mountains their own territory. Okay. Like that's the, 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 the local populace doesn't really care because Cheliax doesn't come over here and do much. And um, the guys in Andoran don't come north because they don't want to deal with them. So <laughs> Isger gets to be a free state, well, a free subordinate state of Cheliax. And uh, it stays pretty quiet around here until you actually get into the Five King Mountains. And I've discovered there's a lot of stuff there, okay. both above and below ground. 
Sorry, so, didn't mean to be that guy, but we got to assume nope. that not everyone listens to like our other stuff and we're like doing a continuation nope. around, you know. For those of us who around. don't have the map memorized. No. <laughs> I'm getting there. I'm going to pull up a map. Don't worry, you well, won't be able to see it. it. Okay, because that, that'll help me at least narrow down. Oh, you won't be of... able to see my map. This is for the audience. This is for Twitch. <laughs> Get, yeah, your map. Sorry. Get your own map. I'll, Get your own map. I'll, I'll think really hard. Um, Poof. <laughs> map of blurry. Is it, is it actually on the... Is it part of the map that they give us in the players? Find just find the Five King Mountains and you'll and go to the very southern end of them. We're gonna point Corey. To, there's the yeah. map. There you go. Okay, we got a map here for the world to see. All right, Mister, can you find Chelyax for us? Oh my. Yep. Right you, get to be, right. you get to be the weather girl. Okay, he's found Chelyax. Now, if you'd be so kind. Five King Mountains. Yep. Go up. Up. Up, up, up. Mountains. It's, whoa, 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 whoa. Slow whoa, down. Whoa, <laughs> Slow down, everybody. <laughs> Do you see where it says Five King Mountains? Maybe like down, like halfway back down to Chelyax. And go right. Go to your right. right. Anything? Anything in there? Almost. No. Come on. No. Nope. Whispering Wood? No. no Keep right. going. Whispering Wood? Right down. I don't see it. Oh, we're we're off world. He, he's drowning us. We're in the ocean. <laughs> what the hell, dude? <laughs> I paid good money for this map, and not even our, our guy can find. Hey, I'm new. Okay, come on. No, seriously, it's it should be yeah. really yeah. Okay, take and hold. Menendore Mountains. Yeah. Okay. Are we north or south of those? These are the mine spin mountains. Oh, you know, oh, there it is. Go far right. Yeah. Right, 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 right. See Iskar? Oh, five go. Hey! hey! My bad. Okay, so back it up to left to Iskar. Right here? Yeah. Okay, now go up like an inch. Okay, so over or to the right an inch. Not that this is really good. <laughs> this is where Age of Ashes and the world of Pathfinder 2nd Edition begins, ladies and gentlemen. Right in the middle of the freaking world. There we go. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, thank, thank you, Miss Corey. <laughs> so where are we, Rob? You are about a third of the way down in the southern end of that mountain range. So come down the Five Kings Mountain. Yep. Right in there. Right about there. Okay. So you know what? Here, bring the camera over a little closer and try to show them. Show the nice oh. people. Oh. Bye bye, camera. Uh huh. What'd you do? You me out. I don't know. Did it pull out? Oh, it must pull out. All right. Da, 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 technical difficulties. <laughs> We're having a good time. All right, so back to you, Rob. Okay. No, I'm going to forget my crashing map um, over here. Not sure what happened. Oh, huh, okay. We'll fix it. Okay. We have an idea of where you are, at least. I mean... Yep. Oh, there we go. There he is. Man. Oh, you guys... Didn't like all didn't like all the wobbling. So as you make your way out, out of the cloister gates, I mean it's you've been there for quite some time to finish up your training, but it's time to go. And you you hear plodding down the road, uh, some talking, the jingling of harness and horns and harness, and around the corner you see there's a well, it looks like a dwarf. I mean all dwarfs look alike, right? Sorry, <laughs> but uh, he sees you stand by the side by the side of the road. There, uh, he he, st he slows down his carriage, motions for the others to pass him. Amongst some of the odd characters you by, you see a couple of orcs go wandering by. Uh, you see uh, a human fighter and mage. Like I mean, so stereotypical, it's almost funny as they go wandering on by. Then a couple of elves wander by, and then further down, as they're coming around the bend, you can see a lot more heavily uh, laden wagons. That's probably the uh, supply caravans themselves. He just kind of pulls up and kind of cocks an eye to you and goes, What, are you beheaded? No, sir. I certainly am not. You don't know where you're headed? No, I do not know. I haven't well, decided yet for today. Oh, most of these folks are headed to Breach Hill for the Call of Heroes. Hmm. You can join it if you like. Sounds like a good place to go. Let's go. Now, to, to help yourself and me. This is a somewhat unsavory lot. Um, and not everybody will be the hero of Breach Hill. So if you are willing to accompany me until our parting of the ways, 
which would be about two days from retail, I'm willing to give you eight gold pieces. Hmm. How about ten? Are you going to try a skill on me there? If you try diplomacy, maybe. <laughs> That's like 100 silver. Mm-hmm. You're going to like just keep him warm at night too? Or? No, we're not <laughs> keeping him warm at night, but it never hurts to ask for a little bit more. Yeah, the, dru- the druid that's given up all belongings. Give me 100 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any particular skills that uh, would, could possibly aid me better than the most? Well, that makes a good question. I can jump like a cat. You can jump like a cat. Can you fall like a cat too? Oh yes, sir, I can. He I looks might... around. And he gets he gets down from he actually gets down from the wagon. You know, locks the brake, ties it up, comes over to the side of the road. You wouldn't have a wee bit to drink, would you? No, sir, I do not. Do you, 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 you monks have nothing inside. Oh, we might be able to go in and ask, but they're not really very friendly with me all the time. Well, more to the point, he kind of looks around again, and he waits. You see a dark skinned elf walk by, kind of gives him the hairy eyeball, just as he's talking to you, and then keeps going. Just ignore to that one. He's trouble. I'll tell you that now. Is that so? But I hear that you have a few relics in the cloister. There might be one or two. Uh, roll versus your uh, do you have lore religion or lore arcanum either of those I have lore uh, and my proficiency is trained okay make a lore skill it's... oh let me pull up my fantasy around the side on me there we go there it is let's go away here I do actually have the, the new map and I'm trying to import it and then I realized I'm not hosting this game you are so I, I need to get you this picture, and then we'll actually have the new Galorian map. Oh, cool. Um, so I, I, need, I, need a, I need a lore check. A lore check from... From Corey. Okay. Go. So how do I do that? Pull up your character. Yes. Pull up your character. And then find your skills. There's a tab yes. on the right side. Yes. And then anything that's got like a little tiny dice, you can double click, or you could literally sort of like with the hand pull and drag and drop it in your dice tray, and away it okay. goes. So which dice do I need to use? It will be, yeah. you see where it says perception down, uh, where perception on the bottom there? Yep. So, it's a dice. so go up there. Which skill is on your lore? Intelligence, right? Or is it wisdom? On my lore? Intelligence. So you grab, see where it says, you see where it says intelligence is there? You'll see a little d20 with a plus whatever, plus one. Uh, well, I see a plus one. But if you grab the little dice in the corner and throw that, it'll give you your roll plus one. Okay, so this d20, that's this yeah. one, I think. Yes, yeah, throw it over there on the side. There you go. I got a 14, so I have a 15. Why did it not add the plus one? Uh, oh, I'm not going to Okay, hold rather... on one second. Yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. Let's... I will, I'll accept the 15 because it's just enough. Okay. Now, the monks don't keep very many things. I mean, that's just not what they do. Um, with your mixed heritage, you you didn't fit in completely but they never treated you poorly and when you when you're when you're exiting the front alleyway there's um before you leave their uh what's it called before you leave that that, the that courtyard the no the portico at the front that leads to the courtyard mm-hmm. there are the archway of death. I'm, I'm having a day. I'm having a day. Sorry, I've been in fantasy grounds all day. <laughs> what you see on the way out is like a half pillar. And on that half pillar, there's different items. Uh, one is a satchel. Not sure why it's special. Nobody ever told you why. You never bothered to ask. Um, another one is uh, what looks like the heels to a staff. The kind you put on a boat staff or whatever to give it a little extra oomph. Um, and as you make your way around, there's a bowl and there's a helmet, but it's an old rawhide helmet. But again, they're, they're not described. Now, the thing that probably would intrigue you most would have been the heels of that staff. Correct. They're made, they're made of an adamantine obsidian, like they're adamantine or obsidian. You don't know which, you've never actually touched them. But the one thing you know is they don't, you do not have to ask to take an item. 
it's if you consider yourself worthy and it's to be returned when you're finished with it. So <laughs> you level up, you are worthy. <laughs> you can pluck any one of these items before you go. And he actually describes that too. He says, you know, as you're coming out, you'll, you'll see some pillars. And on those pillars, there's some, some stuff. Did you ever look into any of that at all? Well, I did notice that they were there and I did inspect some of the items, but I did not know that I was allowed to take one. They probably didn't want you taking it based on your, yeah, well, you know what we're talking about. Not everybody's perceived as equal, but yeah. you are a monk. So if you take, if you're going to take one of those items, I would probably see to it now. And I'll give you one more gold piece for your help. Hmm. Deal. I would turn around, enter back in, and pick up the parts for my bow staff. Yeah, and that's exactly what they are. It's a heel piece and a headpiece. Uh, they're almost exactly the same. They are cold when you pick them up. Like like cold enough to make you, whoa, that's cold. And then they you um you you they they you feel a bit of a they're, they're they feel slippery, but they're they they're not. Like I said, it's just they're that shiny and that polished. Now, you're obviously going to have to craft them at some point to, to make them worthwhile, but you can slide those in your pocket for now. But you didn't find me a wee bit to drink, did you? Hop in the wagon. <laughs> Get in the back there. There's a wee bit for you to drink and eat back there. Thank you, kind sir. And he starts going again. You hear the distant roll of thunder. Um, that's been chasing you around for days. But like at this time of year in the mountains, like I said, yeah, it's the call of heroes over there on that side of the mountains. But on this side of the mountains, it's getting to the rainy season. So who's next on my list? That would... Not me. Not you? <laughs> Technical difficulties, not me. <laughs> okay, let me grab my next character here. Where is... As chatty as I might seem in the moment. <laughs> You'll pick on me later, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's Thaw's Tall? Yes. Okay, I'm going to flip your character sheet here, take a quick look. Well, I mean, it's the same pattern as before. You're taking your time wandering on the trade route. And, like, I mean, a few smaller groups have gone by but they're mostly really tight like there goes a group of elves and they want nothing to do with you and there goes a group of dwarves and they're all drinking and talking about the fun brewery they're going to set up later on and then you see um a gypsy caravan goes by they slow down they kind of look at you if you don't call it to them they'll just continue on on their merry way <coughs> <clears throat> excuse me um and as it towards as night as it wears on towards night i mean you've only been on the road for a few days but like i said you can hear the weather coming you start to hear the jingle and bells and uh of yet another large caravan so as night sets on you see a couple of lanterns swaying down the road you hear the creak of the wagon Ho, oh, neighbor where are you off to i like everybody else in these parts we're going to breach hill there's a snappy looking dwarf sitting up front. He's probably he's probably in his mid hundred and fifty somewhere around there. Blue cloak on. Um, it's a he's driving a horse. It's a horse drawn wagon that he's got. And as you see, you can see there's several people behind him. Now he he pulls up short, and my elf in the back, like he doesn't do it gently. He pulls up kind of short. That's why you surprised me. Didn't think to see anybody out here this time of night kind of just wandering um not really from around here oh, so been just been kind of following the flow of the traffic have you heard the, the, the rumors of the, 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 the heroes gathering in breach hill i was wondering what all these folks were doing out here so is it well, i'm a i'm an ex-mercenary looking for work well it's fairly common around these parts for the people to head to Breach Hill to look for work, but it's just as common through the higher on to protect caravans such as me own. So I'll offer you eight gold pieces that I can take you within two days of Breach Hill. And then if you choose to continue the Call of Heroes, that is up to you. Well, 
you caught me on a good time, neighbor. I'm looking for work. So if that's what the offer is, I don't have anything else lined up. So I'll take it. Well, get your gear. Hop up in the back there. Will do. So my everybody's favorite monk, you're nestled in the back there amongst the uh, casks and barrels and stuff. And a half orc comes around the back and is getting ready to jump on. And uh, Thaz, you look in and you see. Describe yourself, Corey. Oh, a six foot two half elf covered in a dark cloak. About 175 pounds. Don't worry, buddy. I've got some ambient music covering you. You just let it roll. <laughs> <laughs> got the nice oxen on the road sounds going here. I can very, hear it. They can hear very it. Very nice. <clears throat> I just look over towards my new friend and nod my head. Okay. Sorry, I uh, my internet just did a little hiccup, so. That's okay. Just don't draw attention to it. Yeah, no, well, yeah, the, half, the half elf greets you. And he doesn't seem particularly worried that you're a half orc. He must be a little more, either a little more worldly or a little less worldly. It works both ways. Either way, he doesn't seem to. Be <laughs> the guy offered you how you offered you come on with me for X amount of money. Who's who's less worldly? I'm wondering. Yeah. Uh, of course, no. All right. Okay. Now, as you're as you're uh, getting up, make a perception roll. Okay. Let's see. Skills. I wish I had some more. Twenty-four. Um, just as you're getting on, off to the side of the road, there's a small cairn of stones. Mm -hmm. and there's somebody hiding behind it. So you saw the bit of a helmet go click and duck back down behind it. Hey, you over there, what you hiding from? And that's where I was looking for Joe. <laughs> he vanishes. <laughs> he's, he's really good at hiding. I mean, I don't even see him on the screen. If you bone the perception, he could just roll away. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give Joe a second to come back. All right. Um, everybody, Everybody's favorite alchemist. Uh, where did you study your alchemy? At the academy. So you are from Absalom then? Yes. Um, and for you, this is just to return home to show off your skills. I am in no hurry to return to the academy. There's, there's so much raw ingredients here in in, in the wild. Um, if I happen to be inspired by something I see or material that I could chip out of a tree, then I might experiment on the road a little. My formulas are sort of... Uh, organic you see i am a churgeon by trade i don't i'm not in a hurry to blow things up and i'm i'm not in a hurry to drink something and become all jekyll and hyde i am looking for the secrets of nature to heal itself they are there and if you are clever enough to accelerate and perhaps you know evolution for example, back in where uh, the orchards in Absalon, um, for the longest time, they had a plum tree. And this plum tree over X amount of years withered and died. They decided to grow apple orchard in the same spot. But where the plum tree was, a new type of apple emerged. It wasn't like a regular gala. This apple was sweeter, like candy. Somehow the seed of the plum had integrated in the ground with a regular apple and a brand new ambrosia nature decided i of course taking inspiration from this fact um realized that on a molecular level the geno splicing of the two seeds it is possible nature will connect on so many levels this is really no secret it is all around us you just have to know what to look for hmm. i find myself distracted constantly looking and not really getting anywhere but <laughs> this enough. is a sacrifice for knowledge and to further my research 
fair enough. Now, Joe. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> that's okay. It happens. Um, is that Auk or Ook? Auk. Well, Auk. You know, unfortunately, just the nature of who you are kind of keeps you on the road. You haven't really met a lot of people who are willing to keep you around. You, you've done, you know, you've been hit and miss with trying to meet a group of people, and there's not a lot of uh, goblins around here. I mean, just there really isn't. Not at this part. Now, you know that if you head north, uh, north and west of Breach Hill and north and east of Breach Hill, there, there are goblins. But you also know about the Call of Heroes. But uh, just a few minutes ago, you saw a half-orc come out from out of nowhere. So you uh, skillfully took cover behind a pile of rocks. Because, of course, he came out of nowhere, out of the darkness. Now, while you're hiding behind those rocks... Uh, a, car a dwarf caravan, a dwarf uh, driving a caravan had, has pulled up and he engaged in conversation with said said orc. And now that you get a closer look, make a perception roll. Uh, just give me one second, I'll try to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Some wolves howl in the distance, by the way, guys. You hear one, and then one or two in response, then you hear another one. Are you queuing me for a sound drop? Because I don't have that. <laughs> I'm just letting them. I'm, I'm happy that I finally got this. I got this nice caravan rolling sound going, oh, oxy cool. kind of yeah. going. I know you guys oh, can't hear it, but it, you know. It's, theater sorry. of the mind. It's in theater. Okay. I, I, sometimes I do enjoy polished effect with theater of the mind. Sure. Oh. Sure. Okay. Hey. You notice. You know. You notice. <laughs> you said howling, not growling. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. From behind that pile of rocks, it's uh, you notice that it's not an orc. It's a half orc. Okay. And you notice him noticing you as you duck back down behind the rocks. And then my half orc. Oh, brother. Neighbor, friend, what are you doing over there, little green man? Or I'm guessing you're green. I don't know. <laughs> An assumption, I guess. I guess I am green. Which color did I you mean, pick? Myself? I am a typical. Paizo Goblin. So I am green. Really? Fair enough. Like, until you get some better lighting on you, you're looking kind of magenta. Am Just I? saying. <laughs> you're looking kind of pink there, dude. Hey. Is that a little better? No, it's bright. Yeah. Now, no, no, that's awesome. You look like you got the, the white skull Zimbabwe <laughs> mask going. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> look like we're going to interrogate you. Yeah. No, that's okay. Kill that. Never mind. Sorry. Yeah. Moving on. There you go. Is that better? No. Right. But, well, no. yeah. <laughs> it's fine. This is a test stream, ladies and gentlemen. Ground zero shows it, you know. But yes, I am a typical Paizo, or Paizo, I guess, uh, goblin. So. You flip him over, he's got the logo stamped on the left cheek. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's one of the Paizo. So, are, you, yeah. are you carrying anything? Pa Pazio approved. Yeah. <laughs> Stamp on the forehead. Now, are you carrying anything particularly interesting? Uh, interesting to myself or to man meats? Anything that would be outstanding <laughs> to the to the, the, the your fleshy friends, yeah. Anything, uh, my weapon, which is a uh, for we call them a dog slicer, but for other races or ancestries, they probably call it a crude sword. Okay, uh, I'm also wearing some various colors in my outfit de depicting. The deity of sorts, if anybody has any religion background to them. If you uh, do have the religion background, guys, roll, now's the time to roll. Okay. Nope. Except for uh, you, Jeff, you're not there yet. Nope. I do, I do have something to add, though. Uh, the coolest thing I've found about the, the Paizo Dog Slicer is, have you ever seen the military daggers that have a hilt that is metal? And to take weight, ounce by ounce, out of the blade, they have tool die circles carved. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay, and the idea is to, to de-weight the blade. The Goblin Slicer always seems to have a few chunks or circles carved out of the blade, and it actually lightens the blade so the little dude can heft it a little better. And they always draw them with that, and that's what I believe that is for, is it's to reduce the weight of the blade, not make it weaker by as it's not like one piece. Yeah, yeah, but it's for majority of ancestries or classes, whatever, they state that it's a crude weapon because it looks like it's patched together instead of an actual... Oh yeah, form sword. Okay, so. okay. Goblin duct tape. Yeah. Did we have our uh, religion skill checks? So uh, since my 
my own personal, like we're doing the character view. I'm just going to, while they're doing that, I'm going to pull up my guy. And you can see here on the skills tab. And then easy peasy, it shows all the T's for what I'm trained in here. And I am not trained in religion. So is this a raw skill role? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay. So I can either double click where my little hand is on the dice here, or I can just pick this whole dice up and drop it over like that. And voila, skill, <clears throat> religion untrained, 10 plus 1 is 11 for me. All right, okay. so I get to you if you don't one too. Yep, and like I said, you, you, you either click on the thing here. As well. Oh, look at that. Okay, not bad. And Jared. Oh, I'm not there. He said don't do this. So right. you're not there yet. But Jared. But I, I showed the audience how to roll. It's so fun and easy. <laughs> Go back to the map, That's sorry. We like you. Right. Uh, it's really hard to give up the chair. <laughs> sorry, guys. It's not easy. It's all good. It's not easy being green. It's not easy yeah, being green. That actually really does. We're the green party. Uh, we are. Wow. I, I don't care about religion so much. So <laughs> that really does reflect my my thought process. When you roll that low, we pretty much say that you like turtles. So we just leave it at that. Um, but Mayford, you did you did make your roll. Thank you, Joe. You need to tell us what religion that is. The uh, Saren Ray, a worship of Saren Ray. Yeah, oh. <laughs> <laughs> trying to figure that one out. Eh? <laughs> can you feel the hate coming from Cheliax? Like, can you feel it just rolling down the mountains here? Yeah, as we're that close. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, they're close enough. I mean, it's four days ride. I mean, that's all yeah. it would be. It would be four days ride. Did you guys get a flash of the shirt there I was wearing? Um, shout out to JV Taurus, who mailed this to us. Okay. You're looking at... Nice. American flag. American flag. But in, up in the top right blue, it has a crown. And this is the signature for King, The Rise of King of Silas, an audiobook by JV Taurus that not only he's put under our banner, but it's he puts it up as a podcast and uh, I was lucky enough to interview him in our Attack of Opportunity show. And I got talking with him and, he, you know, he's like, do you have merchandise, you know, cross promotion? I said, if you send me a T-shirt, I love T-shirts, I'll wear it. So here I am. I got the T-shirt yesterday, <laughs> first live stream, you know, promoting, brother, that type of thing. It's not all about us, you know, hands out to the community. Now, awesome. Joe, uh, yes. you may want to explain why we're commenting about uh, the worship of Saren Ray. Uh, it's... <sighs> Like for, I guess, the individuals who have a, I guess we're starting that. Nobody knows anything about anything. So. Well, I, I'm not sure that Corey, Corey would know who Saren Ray is or was. Oh, okay. Well, it is. Or it was, I guess. Hold on. I just got to pull it up as I have to read it again. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. If I, if I throw you a lore cube, I'll just say so. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah, been reading the know. rule book, not the so, Galorian book. <laughs> uh, so I'm just, does, just that have, does that help, Joe? If you look in, uh, there's a wiki link. Oh, look at that. Oh, thank you. That was so quick. <laughs> I was going to send, send you the same thing. <laughs> As I'm trying to file, file through the book going, eh, 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 eh. there we go. All right. Yes. So uh, the, the, the title of my deity is so you shot you're breaking up there joe which is stream and honesty <laughs> we're not getting any of this buddy <laughs> damn oh <clears throat> can we have that again why did that just get all crappy Be because i don't know your internet is not uh not part that's okay can we have that again in the eyes of saren ray sure the the dawn flower and the healing light <laughs> and the healing light are otherwise known as the Everlight. And she is the goddess of sun, redemption, honesty, and healing. And she is mostly worshipped by farmers, healers of usually the clerical nation, and redeemed evildoers. Yes. And so as, as you can see on the map here, the Golden Road, Osirian, Katapesh, especially Kadira, your... Egyptian Arabic um, cloned for Galorian countries, very, very popular there. And has spread across the inner sea. Now, the only reason it's a bit odd around here is because, well, anybody who knows anything about Cheliacs, 
uh, well, they're they're a demon ruled nation. They don't have good gods there. So for you to be openly wearing the symbol of Serenry, like I mean, but that's that points to you. Yeah. But bear in mind, if you make your own skill check, pretty soon it may be time to hide those colors. Yeah, maybe. Maybe it, that's up to you completely. Yeah. But uh, like like he explains, like it's the goddess of Temperance and Virtue. She's the one who defeated Rovagog, which means yeah, there's, there's a whole series of dwarves who aren't big fans of Saren, right? But that's for a later date. But um, <laughs> as he's knocking door to door, telling you this, yes. <laughs> Have you heard um, the good news? <laughs> Who's a little fellow behind the rocks there? Come a little closer. You see a dwarf. He's dressed in a blue cape. He's not, not terribly old. Seems friendly enough. You know, he's, you, look, you look half drowned as the rain starts to fall even heavier. Yes, I, I'm seeking uh, transport if you have room. Well, one of you guys give me a leg up there. You give me a leg up I'm in the back. He's pointing at the half work. You haven't quite. You haven't quite yes, caught up. Yes, yes. Um, um, <laughs> you in the back. Yeah, I'm well, not prejudiced. This, Come this up half... from Goblin. <laughs> you green half orc in the back. Get up. Give me a hand. Jeez. Give me a second. Give me a second. I <clears throat> throw my backpack up into the thing. And you just hear just the the solid thud. How heavy is your backpack? How much uh, I'm actually a little bit overweight. Um. <laughs> I have <laughs> so am I. Yeah, uh, I am carrying um, 11.9. Okay. So you're referring to the bulk system. The bulk system. Yeah, the old I'm... encumbrance system, which is all based on weight. They have a sort of like, here's your slots of bulk. Standard. And my no penalty is at nine. So Yeah, everybody well, gets like five plus their strength modifier. Is that how that goes, Joe? You are correct, sir. The advantage, though, if you're traveling with the caravan, uh, and this goes for any of you who are carrying a lot of stuff, you can dump your backpacks and stuff here. You can actually put it in the dropped category so you're not encumbered. So if you were encumbered up till now, as long as you're traveling with these guys, you can leave your backpacks in the wagon and check them off your list there so that your bulk goes down. Hmm. So you don't yeah. have to worry about it later on. I won't it count it as drop in the dirt. <laughs> yeah, the the, the, the springs on the back of, of the... <laughs> the wagging sink in a little bit. Actually, make a perception roll, all three of you. Okay. okay. As a matter of fact, things just got bulkier. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. oh. It's uh, I'm looking for. Why did wow, we... Mayfrey, you're, you're paying attention. And so is that as well. Uh, you don't notice it as much, maybe just because where you're standing, but the, the other two of you? Um, when he throws that backpack in there, that wagon should have rocked a hell of a lot more than it did. So we're working for, for smugglers. Awesome. <laughs> well, like in here, you see there's four or five casks down one side stacked up. There's some boxes on the other side. And then on the reverse of the uh, carriage seat, there's a uh, strong box, which would account for some of the weight, and it is locked. Yeah, my um, all of my stuff looks very used, very worn. Uh, definitely, kind of like the gray skin to work. Definitely in my family background. Okay. Um, now, were you raised by orcs or humans? Uh, orc tribe to be used as fodder in the Broken Lands. Gotcha. Which explains why you're here, because that's not a good place to be for a half oh, And then I was exiled. So all my tribal tattoos are actually like, it looks like someone tried to burn them off. Ouch. Work. When you take your shirt off, you're going to be cute, aren't you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so like the one big noticeable thing is I'm carrying a mall that looks like it was used for giants. There, that's what I was looking for. I knew you had oh. something in there. Uh, so I it's about that... as big as you are, Ock. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, or bigger. Bandolier of hatchets, um, a neck slicer, a wooden shield strapped to my backpack. Um, you know, a little bit of everything. I look like you know. There's yeah, you may even see a, a hint before. of a climbing kit, kit sneaking out of the uh, out of my backpack. I look like I might be very good at um, siegecraft. Fair enough. 
So, like I said, uh, if you guys, like I said, if you don't do any further inspection, uh, he motions to, he turns around, he opens the, the slide and there's just some blankets over there to get some sleep if you can. I'm going to keep on going until we get to the inn. Mm -hmm. okay. drop, drop the back there. I don't want the rain getting in. And now about this time you hear, like, people have started to slowly pass as you've been talking, but once he gets moving, um, like you said, Really, it's just swaying back and forth, and the three of you in the back looking at each other right now. All you all you can smell is wet goblin and wet orc. <laughs> I'm not sure how pleasant that is, but we'll leave it at that. I am clean. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> got, got, got <laughs> caught in the rain. It's oh, bath time. Got stole, but, yeah, that's yeah, what you're doing. Just passing a bar amongst guys in the back of the yeah. Yep. Just don't drop it. Yep. <laughs> Yep, yep, yep. <clears throat> Karaoke night, and it is girl. Okay. Mm. Um, Dr. Quack. Yes. You, hey. You, you. hey. Quack's yeah. a real gnome name. I took Quack after my mother's. Never mind. I'm not there yet. I don't well, have to defend myself against you. You're actually quite saddened because. The, the group you were traveling with, they said, oh, don't, 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 don't worry. Just head up the road there. Turn left. You'll find the inn. They'll put you up for the night and some caravan will probably pick you up on their way. They ditched they, me again, didn't they? Well, you talked a lot and they left you behind. No. Oh. Just what it was. But the one thing you did notice is there was at least one very dark skinned elf with them. Hmm. Didn't say much. Um, and Everybody just kind of accepted that the elf was there. If you know what I mean, it's like, okay, you can ride a horse or you can get on the carriage. We're just letting you travel along. Uh, well, but like I, I, I don't mean to pry, but I, I do find um, I do find all these things um, quite interesting. I mean, may I make a social check to yes, you may. take an educated guess? I don't see my character. Dr. Quick. Yeah. Third from the third from the left. I see you. Oh, okay. Sorry, I didn't realize I was I had to go I was going into the original character uh notes here. Oh let's see I'll train in society, yes. <clears throat> uh with a twenty I am suspicious that this dark skin elf might be a dark skin well, elf. When you start thinking about it, you're like, wait a second, he was armed with a rape here. Hmm. Wait a second. That was some strangely ornate armor he was wearing. Possibly from the Shadowlands. Yes. Mm. And you're, with that lore, you're pretty sure he is. Uh, if I get the opportunity, I would have leaned in and asked if he had any possible willing to sell or buy, sell anything from the Shadowlands or buy anything from the surface in the way of uh, an agent, a reagent, a uh, component that... You know, do you, have, uh, do you have any moss stuck to the bottom of your boots? Uh, just... Walk the other way, little man. Uh, okay. Leaves you behind. You got no use for you. All right. Well, I tried. Um, do you have any thievery skills? Well, uh, is that just because I'm less than four feet tall? No, that's that's me asking for one simple reason. You made your social check high enough. They all carry lethargy potion, and it's the only place you can get it. Is in the Underdark or the Shadowlands. Oh, well, excuse me. One, two, three, four. These are rolls. I mean, why did you say so in the first place? Anything above 26? Uh, no, 9, 21, 22, 13. Okay. Well, I'm going to give you a break. You you, 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 you think, oh, crap, there's a chance for me to get something. I can't get anywhere else. You get excited. You make go for it. Yeah, I get caught with the 9. Well, he turns around and looks. And I make a diplomacy check to, uh, you know, Bly, get out of bluff. I'm terribly sorry. I was was so curious. You know. Five gold. Oh, fine. Can you give me gold? I'm looking. <laughs> Checking my sheet. <laughs> do, 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 do. Where is my stuff? Actions. Uh, you something notes. Else from, your, from your social or you realize. In, inventory. Here we go. Oh, no. uh, he can't afford gear. to be causing a lot of trouble for himself. No, no. Um, my total value of my items is seven, eight silver pieces. So that's like seven gold out of the hundred fifty. So yeah, fifty silver pieces goes bye bye. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I rolled his alignment. He hands you a lethargy potion. Oh, sweet. 
use it carefully. Okay. So that would put me down to 22 silver, 50. I just went bye-bye and my gears were 78, which is the total of 150. And, um, uh, if you were to sell the lethargy potion, if you were to sell it, you gain back three times your equipment value. Does this, um, does this come under arcana possibly arcana or occult? Okay. Nope, okay. Arcana. I would like to, you know, it's, it, I'm sure he's oh, on the up and up, but with a 26, I want to make sure that this shit is real. Yeah, just, it's still just, sealed. It's still sealed from the Underdark. Kind of just add a component here. There we go. And does it turn blue, yellow, green? Please be careful with that. Uh-huh. I am a <laughs> professional, you know. Swirl around, around my little vial. Last word, I'm just uh, but, you know, swirling like around my little vial. Anyway, is it uh, legit? It's legit. All right. It's mm. enough to dose a weapon twice. And uh, what is Leather de Jou? <laughs> the first uh, actually goes in four stages. Um, when you get a second, flip into the bestiary. You'll find it under uh, all the droves carry all the drove rogues and assassin carry it. Oh, I don't want to say it out loud. I'm intrigued. Excuse me. No, I don't. I don't want every gnome. <laughs> every gnome between here and Wisconsin knowing what a Leather Jew is. Right. That's where you find it. Just look up drove in your bestiary. I'll be a just okay. Yeah. But uh, that was earlier. Now you, all your excitement is gone when you find the burned out and. No. But like everybody else so far tonight, you start, you hear wagons creaking up the road, some muffled docking, some shaded lanterns. The rain's probably medium to heavy now. Okay. Uh, the one thing is, the in itself, like it is burned to the ground. Okay. That, that, and, and you know what? You hear a dwarf start cursing, like from a good okay. 20 how long, yards. How long away. have they been camped out here? Like Only for an hour or two. Uh, that's fine. Does is, is, does this structure give any kind of shelter? You can you can stay in the stables. The stables are to the to the east of it. Okay. They didn't well, burn down the stables. They just burned down the tavern. So I've been yeah, like I said, I've been left alone, bitched by yep. party every other weekend, yep. and uh, now I'm here. I'm stuck in the rain. I've been here for an hour, and I hear yep. people. And then you start to hear a dwarf cursing. Get like he yep, no, says I'll, words that I don't even know. I'll run out. <laughs> Oh, travelers! Oh, hey! Oh, oh travelers! Travelers! Oh, lucky! You guys, you guys in the back hear the dwarf cursing. Yeah. Then you hear, then you hear uh, a relatively high-pitched voice yelling at you uh, from above, and then you hear other people going, "No, are you telling me it's not? We came all this way out of our way to go." You see a pair of uh, the ones you saw earlier, the uh, a fighter and a wizard, obviously brothers. They look that much alike; like they you, you can't tell them for others. The one, the fighter, he shrugs your shoulders and walks over to where the gnome is. He kind of looks down at you. What are you? Excuse me. I'm in distress. I am so happy you came along the road at this time. I mean, look, there's been a fire. It wasn't my fault. There's been a fire. I'm not going to say I'm an alchemist because they just put two and two bombs together and I get blamed for shit. So no, no, no. <laughs> it's just like I came upon, you know, uh, just like you, I'm likely seeking shelter at this end and found it burned out, you know, and my companions. Where are you? Sorry? I've never seen you before. Um, the wizard kind of walks up. He puts his hand on his brother's shoulder. He's like, my apologies for my brother, young gnome. He's not as worldly as some. But don't step in front of his blade if you can if you don't have a chance to. No problem. I'm I'm flattered that you think I'm young. I'm thirty seven actually. Really? You carry it well. Thank you. Now everybody else, um that there were a pair of orcs I mentioned earlier. They've had enough. They saw the burned out inn. They turn around and head because the road comes up to where the inn was. About ten minutes back there was a turnoff heading directly east. The orcs leave. And they're like, uh, no end. I'm, I'm out of here. You walk into the rain. They throw up their heads. They take off in one direction. So that leaves you with the dwarf, um, two elves, and another cloak. You know what? That person isn't taking their cloak up to find out what they are. Your caravan is getting smaller as it goes along. Um, the loaded caravans, like with the actual goods and stuff, they start pulling in a half circle about a half mile down the road because since they can't stay at the end, they're just going to circle the wagons as it were. And you notice the people from there's most, it looks like looks to be mostly humans. They don't really bother with all the group of adventurers up front. Like these are the guys there to clear the road, keep it out of the way, but that's women and children and families back there. And they just don't want to hang out with 
the, this monthly assortment up front. Yeah. Well, speaking of monthly assortment, I, um, on a lark, I actually asked Twitter what they would like me to play. And I put in all the classes that weren't on our other show and all the races. So obviously not dwarf that isn't in our Friday show in age of ashes and an astounding 70% or more went for alchemist gnome. So I typed it into the internet second edition and, and boom, I got this Veresian looking slick black hair, eyebrow raised octagonal glass wearing little Brown coat tunic holding a smoking yellow vial. <laughs> And, you know, it's just the, the little sort of trim black goatee. The eyebrows just come out a little bit, like just off the forehead, not like antennae, that kind of thing. Got little <laughs> runes on his jacket or whatever. And, you know, the little lace just comes naturally. Okay. Um, my other my other three party members, what do you do? Like, he's obviously settling in for the night. Um, I would like to, I guess, combination of... Um, perception and warfare to kind of see how secure we are. If that works. Okay. Well, it's you're ringed on to your to your southeast. You can start to see the mountains rising. So you're mm -hmm. in the foothills there. Uh, no, this is a wide open area, man. This, is, the, it, is it still raining? Yeah, and still, it's getting heavier. Like every few minutes or so, you hear a roll of thunder. It's getting wetter as it goes along. Okay. Um, but the whole passage on this side of the hill along the road was cleared back at some point. Now, it's obviously, uh, you know what, I'm going to give it to you because it's really not that hard to figure out. Like, it was cleared probably, you know, decades ago. Because even though the Call of Heroes comes, like, I mean, there's more than one road. This is just one of the ones. Now, the real thing is, um, the dwarf is still, he's just sitting there getting wet, look at, looking at the tavern. Um, and this is the dwarf that kind of hired me, right? Yeah, he's just, he's, he's just very sad. He was all boisterous and happy before. He's like, oh, look at you, and look at you. Come on, drum your body. You're just some gold. And I was just like, no. Excuse me, neighbor. I'm, uh, I'm going to try here to do my job, but uh, how many guards do we have for this caravan <laughs> well unfortunately them gypsies when they passed by they hired out some of my best men which is unfortunately more fortunate for us both you seem you seem pleasant enough i hired you three the elves they watch their own and uh avoid the hooded one um so i'm I'm going to go and try to make conversation with the others that he pointed to that are going to be a part of this. That would be game. our <laughs> <laughs> goblin and our half elf. That would be our party. <laughs> you boys. Ho, neighbors. Uh, it looks like we've got ourselves a, a, a job a tent, to do there's here. There's a tent in the back there you can take. Don't be standing in the rain. Right. That's why we have cloaks. Yeah. <laughs> Adventurers back. Uh, shout, shout out Good to morning. Tim R of Tabletop Audio, who I'm pulling all these wonderful ambient sounds from. TabletopAudio.com is a free site. And just like Sirenscape, it has soundboards and all kinds of stuff, all for free. And we love using it in our podcasts and such. And there's no subscription, ladies and gentlemen. No subscription, you say? No subscription! And we actually, again, had the distinct pleasure of interviewing uh, Tim on our uh, Attack of Opportunity show. Back to you, Rob. Yes. Now, <laughs> sorry. Like that, um, the, the dwarf mentions for you to grab a tent out of the back. So feel free to rummage, rummage around in the back. He's not going to stop you. Um, Mr. Dr. Quack. Yes. You can see the dwarf forlorn. Let me look at you. Was there nothing left when you got here? I've only been here an hour. I'm assuming that this scene played out quite some time ago actually a little bit of forensic you know Thank you. make it make a judge here poke around like before i was just miserable taking um shelter but now that there's companions and people and a little bit of protection i wouldn't mind poking around look for a cause you know yep that does actually fall under forensics okay which falls under perception uh, to find something and then fig figure it out later uh, let me take a look at your character what you got for skills there uh, well, I'm trained in perception, uh, occultism, uh, medicine, 
Um, crafting, Arcana, Certain Society. You know what? Uh, it's a. F it's going to be a flat check of 16. Well, sh shall I Perception to see if I find anything first? Yes, Perception first. Okay. Oh, I like turtles too. Nice. <laughs> oh, it's this, right. Oh, the poor turtle. <laughs> yeah. Well, everything's charcoal and wet. I'm not going to find anything in this mess. Um, but do I, because you took the time to look, I'm going to give you one more perception roll. Can I take 10? I guess we're not going anywhere. You cannot take 10 because you're actually like, like I didn't find anything. I couldn't find anything. So you start looking around harder. Mm. If you take the time, mm. you get one more perception roll. No negatives. I, as I said earlier, I, I do enjoy the sort of macro investigation of anything that does happen to get my interest. Uh, let's have a look here. Mm, ah, 15. Yes, yeah, really interesting. That's much better. This, if, um, I, if I chip away at the charcoal and the re revealing the well, dry innards of these you, boards, you know, I can see That's that. what you noticed. This stuff was flash blasted into ash. Ah, this but, place didn't burn down normally. Perhaps it got... magic or even better, an accelerant. One or the other, probably magic. Oh. If I had a mage, I could tell you what, but there's no mages around. Uh, no, no alchemy involved and all. No. Besides, besides the process of an actual ignition. And, oh. and the only reason you can tell that is because it's equally scorched all the way around. I need to get my hopes up. So when you go to touch the bar, it goes, pfft, okay, oh. and everything is burned right through. Like there's uh -oh. nothing, nothing left. I will amuse myself by flash poking at chairs and watching them disintegrate just for observation and you know and that's what you're doing. watching yep. them do this <laughs> pull up my notes and hmm it's possibly something to be learned here and after the fact now thaws do you pay any attention to anybody else or are you just uh, going to set up camp in a perimeter with these guys oh i'm going to be paying attention um I, like I said, my head's on a swivel type of deal. I'm actually on top. I, if I can make it, I'm going to try to climb on top of one of the wagons, kind of looking out to keep my night vision good. Um, so if I if the gnome goes running off and he's not trying to be stealthy about it, then I'm, my eyes are probably going to watch him to see what he has. And well, when he comes back, I will ask what if he found anything. So you're going to literally sit on top of the trap? Not the the wagon <laughs> okay i'm sorry the wagon trap is what's behind the, behind the wagon seat there's a thing called a trap right that you can, you can literally get up on top of it that's the one wooden part and then below it is where the chest is and then the head the rest of the cover goes back from that it's actually sturdy enough if you want you can sit right on top right you're gonna get wet like you wouldn't believe but you can sit right up so i'm gonna have my cloak on and everything but yeah okay. i'm gonna take hey, i got hired for a job i'm gonna do it oh you guys see him climb up all the way up right to sit on top of the wagon what do you guys do I think I'm going to make my way out of the back of the wagon. Yeah. Take a look at what this gentleman's doing, and I'm going to cast the detect magic spell. What's your radius? Where can I find that? All of that spells detect magic spell. spell. Yeah. Should be a little red dragon, uh, like in oh, the description. You can pull up and have a good look. Mumble, mumble, remember, remember. 30 foot emanation. 30 feet. Okay. Yeah. Rob, don't bog yourself down by reading, man. Put somebody no, on Put somebody on it. Go to the next guy. Are you I'm you're burning dead air? <laughs> oh, my apologies. <laughs> no, no, that's um, fine. Just, just a technique I picked up. Magic. Um, you sense magic in your belt pouch. <laughs> Law. Sense. <laughs> <laughs> Magical is. Mm -hmm. right. uh, you sense magic on those two elves over there because they're within 30 feet of you. They're not that far back. Um, and then you get a strong emanation of magic from the doorway of the inn because you're just across the road from it. It's just at the range of your magic. But there's something over there. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I think I shall I walk wonder. closer towards the doorway. Ah, it makes him a hero. Makes there him part go. of this TV show. No, <laughs> seriously, seriously like, you, you see freaky shit going on, people like go and phone it in. No, this guy, he is a hero. <laughs> so, Quack, you see him. He's actually, you're sifting through and knocking furniture down with the mm -hmm. poke of a finger. Yeah. Because it makes you big and strong. Completely and absorbed. 
Looking for and the finer details. You see um, a half elf approaching. Hmm. Actually, but there's nothing to cover his your approach because the whole place is knocked to the ground. So like he see coming. What Doctor Clark probably would see is a cloaked figure about six foot two, hmm? slowly approaching with a staff. Okay. Well, hello there, tall, dark, and ominous. <laughs> I don't suppose you have uh, any training in being, shall we say, uh, or interest in being my assistant in this investigation. And why would I want to do that? Well, there's obviously a story here. There's something to be learned and uh, gives you something to do instead of sitting out with the rest getting cold and wet. I don't think I do assistant very well. Okay. Well, stand there and just try not to creep me out. I go back to what I was doing. Uh, now you have to take magic as a cantrip, correct? Correct. Okay. So you can pretty much cast that all day long. So now that I'm entered into the doorway, I will again cast a detect magic. <laughs> Ooh, I feel a tingle. <laughs> well, I'm carrying magical stuff. <laughs> oh, hey, watch where you're pointing that. Uh, it's it's literally emanating from about two feet in front of you. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Just glow it in. But like I said, it's all covered in wet, nasty ash. And by the way, the wolves, you hear the wolves howling again, and there's more of them than there was before. And uh, it's now clouded over, and the moon's covered. So now it's bloody dark as well. Dark, raining, wolves howling. It's not turning out to be a pretty night. Feels just like home. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> hey, I'm going to go play in a puddle. He, keep, he keeps mentioning it, so i got to pull this up now. I will slowly approach this two-foot pile, and I throw my cloak, the hood of my cloak back and poke the pile with the end of my staff. You haven't taken time to put the heels on yet, right? No, I have not. That'll be your downtime activity next time around, okay. Um, well, you're poking around, poking around. Make a perception roll. Dong. I just got wolves howling away. <laughs> you're not finding anything yet. It's there. You may have to get down on your hands and knees because this stuff is like it's thick silt. Hmm. Do you get dirty to find the magic? <laughs> get I am interested. That I take to one knee, <laughs> the black soot hands, <laughs> and begin to poke through the pile. It'll take you a few minutes, but eventually your hands close around something solid. <laughs> you do this and you wash it away in the rain. There's enough rain coming down, you can wash it away. It's an adamantite ring made of the same stuff that your the heels of your staff are. Oh, very interesting. Same thing when you first pick it up, it's cold. You get a weird shiver and then it stops. Why is he finding all the toys? I know, exactly. I've, been, I've been ripping this place apart for like a freaking <laughs> hour and what I, is it? Just very quietly take my ring and put it into my belt pouch. Okay. Put my cloak, my hood up black <laughs> over my cloak. Just give him the stink eye, you know. And and right. on outside. You really can't hide that you found something unless you say you're going to try to sleight of hand it. Do you bother with sleight of hand or you just kind of wash it off, put it in your pouch? No, Stir I'm just going to wash it off and put it in her Fair enough. So you would notice it too, because um, it's pretty obvious. He walks over, he starts oh, poking fine. through the dirt, and he gets down on his hands and knees, and he starts digging through the dirt. From from my perception, he's just picked up something like a quarter, or even if it is like a ring or, you know, so it's like, you know, like he's taking change from a couch. Yeah. I am I am honestly interested in like what really happened. And once that dwarf put that in my head, it can't shake my focus. I do acknowledge yeah. that he's like, picking around and picking up whatever but you know what i'm saying like we're not going to get into that like well did i see him take it well it did you know right thievery middle night no no no, no you know not thievery you just found no. something in the dirt yeah finders keepers yeah something like that no if, like, anything, if anything i've learned not to do this kind of crap like i see you taking that because that's how you get a blade across your neck in the middle of the night going heck i only he saw me take the diamond no i'm not getting to that this is my precious. I yeah, I hum in. I start humming <laughs> innocently. Da, 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 da. Could he get any creepier? Yeah. Da, 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 da. yeah. Um, but um, so there's flash magic that's burned this place out. Yeah. And after destroying furniture, tee hee poof poof gets old. 
Um, I will try to be thorough as long as it takes. So you're just going to keep poking and digging. Yeah. Like till I'm satisfied that I've covered not every square inch, but like every, where would you start a fire? Where would, a, where would a magical come from? What would guy in a corner? Do you come out of the restroom going, Hey, that's my beer. Poof. Like tell me how much time you're going to spend till stopped. Until, until I hear you're the stopped. wagon pulling away. This is usually how I get left behind. I get too absorbed in something <laughs> till morning. <laughs> Until I fall exhausted and just curl up on the half fork. Yeah. Either treat it as a night of rest, or if you have any downtime activities, uh, studying spells, recovery, if, stuff like that. If it's getting dark, like I said, it's raining, and I guess we're working by like the the, the dripping torchlight, as it were. You know, if well, it's... the dwarf, the, actually, the dwarf brings you over a lantern, like a hooded lantern, so you can actually look around with the light going out. Okay. Uh, I'll amuse myself for an hour or two, but you know, sleep is sleep, man. So uh, then I need uh, another lore roll. Or versus your arcana, I believe. Okay. <laughs> what is that? that, that, that that's eight trains. Roman napalm was used here, guys. <laughs> oh, no, no, yeah, I was going to say, isn't that like a critical fail on a skill? Yeah. Um, do me a favor. Like, if, if our natural 20 automatically bumps it up a step, and 10 over is a critical success, and 10 under is a critical, is a possible critical fail... Oh, yeah. Now, if I was looking for something that's supposed to be 18, that would have been a fail. But does a natural one automatically just drop me a step? Joe, save yes. me. Oh, shit. Yes, sir. Okay. So an hour and a half uh, in? You know, you know what? You're like, this place was blown down by a dragon. Yeah. And you're much. Uh -huh. Dragon was flying by and just torched the whole bloody place. That's yeah. There's like a couple of coasters that have melted into like a diagonal or like a triangular shape, and I'm convinced they're dragon scales as they're collecting yes, them up. Exactly you know? what it is. All these wooden coasters that are charred. It's like, oh, another dragon scale. I'm onto something here. <laughs> Aha! <laughs> Obviously, this was a, you know, poking the black sooted uh, black dragon that frees fire. Mm. Nope, nope, nope. The evidence is sound, you know. Let me breathe fire over here. Forensic winds. <laughs> forensic for the win ah sleep now <laughs> <laughs> so, nice so tired of convincing myself that i'm wrong now no. do you tell me that like when you come back i'm gonna wave at you if Neighbor, you, asked me, if you asked me for, yeah yeah magic was obviously used to start a flash fire and i strongly suspect and lean into the save stage whisper, but unfortunately, because of my high pitched voice, my stage whisper is shrill. It's like dragons, <laughs> really. Loud. What if you, you have gray? Or... You see a, 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 a gray of or some basically sort. just go even paler. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I'm going to sleep under the wagon tonight. F Friend dwarf, do we have any large ballistae? For this caravan, I I do not have anything in my pack that will handle a dragon. I think that'll There's just no piss dragon. it off. There have been no dragons in these parts for hundreds of years. I start waving my scales at them. Aha, I beg to differ. <laughs> <laughs> but really, before this tangent just becomes half the stream, I would, would like to bed down <laughs> under the cart. <laughs> under the wagon. You know, pull out my sash. Uh, Good night, everyone. No. Dream of dragons and how to protect yourselves. Good night, everyone. He's going to roll his own perception check. Yeah. <laughs> Just diplomacy like, to convince people of what I've already convinced myself. Hmm. Start lecturing them on the probability of how a dragon could end up in the vicinity, how a tavern full of you. merriment might piss it off, how, you know, this. Like, yeah. Son of a bitch. That could possibly be a dragon. Oh, yeah. No, I, I'm all fine. They're, they're doubting my my forensic. Uh, I'll spend the extra half an hour convincing them. Where's my diplomacy? Here we go. <clears throat> and in summary, with my 23, these scales inevitably deduce that the a dragon, any, so any window or door structure is large enough for an adult or aging drake to stick its neck inside, piss around, and completely vaporize all the patronage as well as destroy this establishment in one fiery burst. The dwarf's a little disturbed, but he believes you. Now, between the two of them, they may convince the rest of you. That's against what, our will save? Yeah. That's against your bullshit save. Yeah. <laughs> <It's delusional. laughs> because there isn't a... Um, He's delusional, man. 
there isn't a we don't really get to make counter rolls anymore, right? Oh yeah, well, it's, it's, it's your DC, right? Yeah, yeah, but the thing is, they're telling the story. The dwarf believes me. I have no reason to disbelieve the dwarf. And then his diplomacy role was phenomenal. He's like, no, 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 this is exactly what happened to us. Like, damn, it could possibly be a dragon. Yeah. <laughs> you, your character usually decides, like, don't tell me this is changing the rule set. That's, correct me if I'm wrong here, GM or, or Joe, who's had his nose in the book. But you do decide what your character yes. believes and disbelieves. But if you'd like to let the dice decide, the, the character DC, the base is like 10, and then it goes off of what's relevant, right? So like would that be, is correct. Would it it's be like your well. wisdom score or would it be like your wisdom modifier? Wisdom modifier plus your your role is all plus you need. Plus eight another from my dwarf. I get a plus two. <laughs> oh, we're going with wisdom modifier. It puts oh, me up at twenty five. No, Again, so yeah, you're, you're the only person I'm gonna fool as possible is half orc. Well, I wasn't trying to like tell everybody. My twenty three was for the one doubting dwarf. The dwarf isn't quiet. He says, You see that I think it might be dragons or dragons here, and you're like, then yeah, you explain yeah, yeah. why. Yeah. He does this thing. He's like, oh, no, the dragon's stuck in the window. No, I'm not Aren't... putting on, like, a science presentation for the entire troop. What I'm saying is I was going to bed down. The dwarf yeah. doubts me. Then I'll I'll br- no, uh, bring him in and, b- 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 you know, convince you him. The dwarf. Now he's going and telling everybody else. Yeah. Great. Good night. <laughs> Thanks for believing. <laughs> I just yeah. really want to sleep. <laughs> I'm assuming that I'm overhearing this daft idea of the fact that it was a dragon who blew up. Yes. Oh. <sighs> I'm going to approach the group. Gentlemen, I do not believe that this was a dragon. I have found a trinket. I reach inside my pouch and hold up in front a ring. Why do you believe that that is uh, their friend, um, equals not a dragon detect magic gentlemen this is one of the things that i'm good at this is a magical ring is a powerful magical ring uh okay and Go ahead, say it, Joe. Uh, I literally killed my video <laughs> because I've said I'm sleeping three times and I'm trying to keep a straight face. It's like, go ahead, Joe. You got, you got this, buddy. <laughs> I can't. I can't. <laughs> it's not a dragon because I found a magical ring. Please make him roll dice. <laughs> and if he rolls high, it's like we're all idiots. <laughs> This this caravan is easily swayed one way or another. Corey, <laughs> from what it is, if a, dragon, if a dragon had been there and saw that ring, he would have taken it with him. They don't leave magic behind. That's why you know it's not a dragon. Oh, like they'd smell it out. And... There you go. That's uh, why I said not much required. Oh, okay. smell okay. oh yeah, no, that's awesome. I'm sorry, but I'm no tree hugger, so I don't know this shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. The, you know, the... I only really know which end of the spear to put into my opponent's the, guts. The, I like that. The GM is backing Point Mr. Stoic <laughs> here, but still, like, we can't hear the GM, man. So oh, I... <laughs> I love it. You gotta, you gotta sell Joe the champion because I'm sleeping. I'm, I'm out of this. Oh, it's all good. It's all good. It's okay. We don't expect that you know everything. You're just here to protect us. But this is a very powerful magical ring. You must take my word. It did. <laughs> I just love the voice. <laughs> Not only I'm part of the ring club for men, I'm also a member. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. I love it. Uh, um, mm. I need a perception roll from anybody who's awake. So, okay. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I'll just get rid of myself. Let me know when I wake up. Oh, my character class uh, needs sleep. Son of a bitch. Oh, I fell that. asleep on watch, apparently. Hey, that's a critical fail. Yeah, I think oh. you did. <laughs> I totally did. You I like sleeping in the rain. Yeah. Uh, we the all wolves. hear the wolves, but Definitely. nobody pays attention. <laughs> <laughs> they're out there, and they're still moving around. Your perception rolls weren't high enough to figure out maybe a direction or anything else, but they're definitely around somewhere. Hi. Yep, just let me bring that back up. Here we go. <laughs> back to my awesome YouTube, my YouTube ambient music of Wolf Howling. How here. dark is it right now? The moon is occluded. 
it is raining. If you were doing anything going forward, like trying to find anything else, you'd be looking at a minus two to, uh, what do they call it now? Situation. Minus two situational check at this point. For yeah. some people. Well, yeah, well. <laughs> some of you have, <laughs> negative 10 for those that are not awake. Every single one of you has either dark vision or... Uh, or uh, Low light. Yeah, Absolutely. step into the way there. Absolutely. Minus one, because it's still rain, not just dark. Yeah. I'm going to oh, throw that. back my hood. Whoa. Gentlemen, what you see... <laughs> He's so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me you have the locks of gold helping here. No, no locks of gold. All right, sorry. I'm not there. Silver. You Silver. see a, a bald half elf with a top knot. One silver eye, one green eye, and a beard and a goatee that travels down halfway down to mid chest that is bound with leather rings every few inches. Well, that would explain the ring obsession. Are you just going to add that to the beard? <laughs> you never know. <laughs> so I step out to the limits of our group and I start looking around to see what I can see. When you say the limits of the group, how far away do you get from the group? Say 25 feet. Twenty-five feet, so that would put you right in dragon breath range. <laughs> yeah, well, just what I mean. Um, as the lightning flashes, make a perception roll. Sixteen. <laughs> That's more than enough. As the lightning flashes, because as you came in, like I said, it's been, it's been cleared back a good. 20, 30 yards to, to just undergrowth. You see a figure with a drawn bow highlighted from behind when the lightning flashes. What do you do? Run away! Uh, no, we're definitely not <laughs> running. I'm going to... How far did you say he was? Oh, he's only about 30 feet away. Like He's not that far away. Like this guy got awful close before he pulled his bow. Uh, absolutely. Uh, I'm going to cast my produce flame spell, which goes 30 feet. Oh, now is that one of the ones that has a save, or you just how you're rolling it at him? Uh, on a success, you deal 1d4 critical success. The target takes double damage and 1d4. What's a save? I don't see where it says that it has a save. So you just have to make the strike then, correct? Uh, it says a small ball of flame appears in the palm of your hand. You lash out with either in melee or, or at range. Make a spell attack roll against your target's you AC. Go. Spell attack roll. Okay. So how do I do that? If you go to your... Uh, it should be... The same thing as the others. You can, if, like I said, there'll be a little dice beside your spell. Okay, okay. I've, got, I've got it now. Yep. Ew. <laughs> that blows. <laughs> yeah, that does. <laughs> you fired up into the sky like a flare. Uh, but I'm going to give you this much. It's enough that you see the figure roll back into the trees. So you may not have hit him, but he definitely took off into the trees. I think I'm going to holler over my shoulder, gentlemen. We have company. Two arms. <laughs> two, two arms. Two arms. Do I get? Is that an automatic wake up, or do I have to make another perception roll for that? No, they're going to wake you up. I mean, that's pretty straightforward. That's... Okay. Although I want you to make a balance check. <laughs> that's acrobatics now. That is correct. Gotcha. Alrighty. Oh, I cannot seem to find my formulas. Uh oh. <clears throat> I guess you have none. <laughs> 13. The book says I have several. Where did they go? It's a, it's a difficult check, but you almost slip off the wet wood 
from where you're sitting, but you catch yourself on the way down and turn it into a real cool dismount maneuver. I will draw my dog slicer and raise my shield, which is just are a you, buckler. Okay, are you going to stand your ground or are you going to pursue? I'm standing ground. Okay, so you're staying there. I'm here to protect Wagon, not to pursue. That's correct. <laughs> Jared. I mean, well, thoughts. I'm going to make a perception check to see if I notice what he was pointing out or if he's, you know, to, to see if there's anything you know about it's Too late. I would tweet because the fireball went up, like I said, and he says there's somebody there. You can search. You can search if you wish, but it's going to be an awfully difficult check. Okay. Even with low light? It's because of the rain. Okay. I can go with that then. Um, in that case, I'm going to ready for whatever comes. Uh, shield. Uh, raised and next uh, next slicer in hand. And Mayford, what do you decide to do? I think I'm going to head slowly in the direction of where he came or where he was. And at the same time, I'm going to cast the detect magic spell. Okay. Let me see how far he can make it. It's length of time here. Do you actually have a, like a spell tab? Yes. Because I'm like going over actions. and over and over my guy, and it's like yeah, they're under my actions tab. Yeah. Okay. So you cast detect magic, and. Make a perception check when you do. And you can add whatever magic modifier you've got. That's your intelligence, correct? Yes, so it's a plus one. You realize when you cast detect magic, you're standing in the middle of a ley line. Wonderful. And it runs right back down the road. You've been traveling along. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And then you take, like, you have enough because you still get to, so once you've picked up on it, you look to your left and you realize at this crossways, because like I said, it goes, it goes east, which heads back to uh, more civilized territory. It goes to the northwest, which is the way you're going to be traveling, and it heads back down south again. And there are branches of it. Uh, the epicenter is the inn. Well... Now, you guys, I'm going to give you two minutes because I need to use the facilities, and then I will be right back. Jeff, if you give us a quick pause. No problem. Discuss amongst yourselves. Death and destruction. So who's got Meteor Strike as a spell, right? <laughs> <laughs>
wait, we'll just wait. <laughs> what part of be quiet while I'm bringing this back up to you people on his hand? And we're back. <laughs> Look at that. Just like magic. It's like magic. It's magical. All right, boys. Thaws. Make a perception roll because you are actively looking around. I know that. Uh, Ox or you? A perception? Sure. Yes. I see it's still raining. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Rain comes from the sky. Who'd imagine that? I better kill some of these windows on my screen. I can't see anybody's mm. roll. Can you put me in the combat tracker even though I'm sleeping? I can if I want to. Yes. Okay. No. Just let me know. <laughs> I, I have a player version that I'm showing here. Um, and I'm assuming sooner or later you're going to ask me for a perception, which will I will get to. Uh, you're not. A, are you? Are you awake now? You tell me. No, if you're choosing, like, if you're choosing to sleep and ignore everything, I no, will not, give you. I'm not choosing to ignore stuff. It was sleeping, and the half orc was like, "Is this obvious? Do I wake? Do I need to make a roll?" Yeah. You said no. You know what? So Between like, the thunder, the wolves, and whatever. Two arms. Yeah, it's <laughs> a sound that's, sleeper. That's the one that's going to wake you up. All right. But Mayford, do you tell them what you see? Yes. What do you see? And Jared, I'm still waiting for a perception roll from you. Yeah. Um... 17. 20. Um, you see the human wizard take off into the trees about 20 yards down the road. Velon Morning Gazer, Mountain Gazer, rip, rips away? No. Yes, he does. Is that the right guy? Okay. That's Velon Mountain Gazer. Okay. I'm just pulling the names out of the track here, sorry. Yeah. In order to make all the NPC stuff work, I had actually to load the combat tracker or I can't load them on the screen when I need them. Hmm. <laughs> just because they don't tech they're not technically NPCs, but that's something they're working out technically, it all works on my end. Okay. Did so you, you see him take off to the trees. Hmm. Should we go after him? It's not good to let one man roam the wilds in a night like tonight. And Mayford, what exactly do you say? I just look around, give him an evil eye and go, let's go. You're going to go after him? Absolutely. Okay. All right, fair enough then. I guess I'll stand here and do our job. <laughs> you go get the stray runaway. I oh, sure me here with the cart and the sleeping gnome. Dragons. Dragon definitely dragons. <laughs> no doubt in my mind. Subconscious or otherwise. Years later he writes this Ooh. entire thesis book on the reemergence of dragons based on a bird. Oh, oh yeah. Like, I'm up there getting the awards in Absalon, you know. They had some part to play. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> Uh, so, so, so the green what? team is staying back and guarding the. <laughs> yeah, the green team. <laughs> All right. aren't, aren't we the green party? Think about it. We got a half orc green. We got a <laughs> goblin green. We have a druid who thinks green. <laughs> green party. And and yeah, like my guy. Um... We're all about money. Yeah, make <laughs> smoking no, green says, things that are good for you if you drink them. Okay, okay guys, uh, before we before we go into combat, drink this smoky green beverage. Yeah, yes. It'll be okay, good for uh, you. Where do you position yourself? Like I said, the bulk of the trade caravans back that way, they seem to have got themselves protected. I mean, they're only they appear to be average people, but like I said, they are four or five guys watching theirs. Hmm. You're by the dwarf's cart, which is about, like about twenty yards from them. It's ten yards to the to the trees. And do you guys, uh, Thaws and Mayford, do you get together and then go after him? Or, or do you tear off into the trees and then wait for him to come after you? I need to know if it's organized or you're both coming at from different directions. Because I need to know how you're going to enter the next part. Hmm. I think we should go together. Okay, so you join together and then go, which is going to be two actions. 
Are you uh, ticking away on the combat tracker? Nothing is sort of highlighted here. Sorry, not yet. I just had to okay. figure out. No, it's fine. Well, if I'm still sleeping until my turn, I'll be right back. You guys keep going. Yes. Play on. Play through. Okay, so what I need to do now is actually clear that. I just got to clear up my uh, tracker here. Yeah, it's no problem. You haven't met a bunch of these people yet, so... <laughs> Who's that? Who's this? <laughs> You're not going to meta me, so I, I trust you on that one. Yeah. But yeah, without being able to create NPCs, I got to create them as PCs, take ownership, and put them in the combat tracker to be able to drop their icons on the maps. Uh, well, it makes sense, I guess. They're going to fix it. It just isn't there yet, because also there is no export from Hero Lab for yeah, it's, second edition yet. Yeah, that it's... Because yeah. when I used to do it for 3.5, it was actually really easy to combine everything into the little booklets and you just dragged everything out. And I yeah. guess that makes sense that they haven't gotten all the bells and whistles worked out. Yeah. But I found a workaround. I should probably write it down for other people, but I've been doing this all week. So, yeah. okay. So you and guys it... get together and you take off into the trees. And if you're taking off the trees there, that means you would be heading. North. North. <laughs> west. Okay. Sorry. Just, just you're heading northwest. Okay. So. Ooh, gotta rescale my guys here. Okay. So he'll get to about there. Um, did I share this map yet? Nope. <laughs> Not that I can see, anyways. You oh, should now. Now I can. <laughs> okay, where are your minis? Uh, that's the one thing I haven't added yet because I didn't wasn't sure if we were going to need them. Okay, but I can use my picture as my token, I believe, right? If you can, if you drop it on, if you drop it onto your thing there, yeah. I don't have a picture yet. <laughs> Why can't I? I need <laughs> okay, to just give me a second here. Token. Right, Alfred is a monk. Camp token furniture character. What do we got? Human. Human. <laughs> <laughs> Not very many. But... Hero token is sugar. Half orc female. Sorry, I'll just grab whatever. Yeah, for now, we'll just grab one. We'll get you a better one later. Oh, why is he so big? I'll scale <laughs> him down, don't you worry. <laughs> Ooh, look how big I am. <laughs> oh, too small. There we go. Okay, so you're coming in through here. You break through the trees. You get to about here. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> I'm, I'm guarding. Oh, you're back there. Okay, yeah. so you're out of the way. So you're actually not on this map yet. Okay. Oh, map. Then you can remove me. Myself and the gnome are not on the map. Okay, so I need Mayford's mini, and I need uh, Saz's mini. Yeah, for some reason it won't let me drop it in. Okay, hold on a second. Did you drop it on your character sheet first? Yeah, it's in there. I don't see it. It should be this portrait. Both the portrait and the token are the same thing. Okay, let me see what we got on there. Yeah, but I'm sure they'll get things fixed. You know, have to remember the game hasn't even been out for a month yet. Yes, yeah. you'll find yourself something that works. I'm just okay. frantically sifting through your tokens here, looking for. Uh, just know. grab one. Yeah, <laughs> that's all I did. <laughs> Close eye grab. No, I have to. I have to match my exact hair color and. <laughs> Looks somewhat of a genius. You aware it's a top-down view, right? Yeah, yes. <laughs> you can see my massive, my massive brain. <laughs> my intellect shows even from the top. Uh, while wearing a cloak. No, that's uh, Mr. Ominous over there. I'm. <clears throat> 
free willy in the wind, as it were. Free willy. <laughs> free willy, yeah. Actually, technically, I'm still sleeping, right? There, there we go. Me up okay, should I be looking for something? Wake me up before okay. you go. go. Right here oh, is geez. you, Jared. All right. I just dropped a I dropped an icon in there and dropped you into the tracker so that you fit now. So I just need one for that Mayford. Works. Mayford into the combat tracker. You go. Arbigo, you get to leave. Valin Mountain Gazer. Interesting. Now he's going to show up as well, but he's not going to show up until you guys are actually there. So we just need one for Mayford. So, oh. what are we looking at here? <clears throat> We're looking at the, I'm just trying to further the podcast aspect. We're looking at a an open green field, a uh, big patch of water, a bunch of trees, and this has just sort of just gone off the road where one's chasing the wizard. That's right. This is the proverbial out of scene. One is chasing down a wizard, as one does. And, and you two get the combat map, so we're safe, and you're on your own. <laughs> Best of luck, buddy. <laughs> I'm going to miss... If I, add, if I add you to the uh, combat tracker, would that let you see the map? I can see the map. Okay, you're good. And then. the world can see the map because the world has my personal view of a, as a player. Oh, good. I just need to be into the combat tracker, into a party thing. So you got to um, pull up your party sheet and then drop my yep. character into it. That's what I'm looking for right now. It's party always sheet. about me, isn't it? <laughs> me, me, me. Oh, don't worry, Oak. We'll get to you. <laughs> Very impatient little goblin, isn't he? Like, <laughs> <apparently>. <laughs> There we go. If you'd like any of my help healing or otherwise, it might be good to have a turn in there once in a while. Oh, just, oh, just saying. <laughs> just saying. Okay, we still need that token for Mayford. Hmm? Still needs a token. Okay. Somebody. Yeah. Elf still Mayford. still working things out. Yeah. So Mayford's going to get this guy for now. In the meantime, well, the DM's distracted. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what shall we do? Well, you're defending the wagon, right? Yep. I can start singing if you want. No, I just. Uh, <laughs> can you sing? Uh, goblins. All goblins can sing. What are you talking about? <laughs> Everybody thinks they can sing after a mug of ale. <clears throat> oh, do you know that classic from uh, Rise of the Rune Lords? You know, <laughs> goblins chant and jo yeah. it's like there's a bard goblin war chanter. <laughs> My guy dies. That's what I'm going for. <laughs> I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be cousin Vinny, your goblin, you know, war chanter. Hey, oh, uh, you know. yeah, all silly little songs. Mm. Down a little bit there. That's not a bad pick. Okay. You guys get to about here. But yeah, it's all good. And then you see. Oops. Oh no! Don't click there. What he stop. And he turns to face you. Wait a minute. He's a wizard and the place burned down. He's running from the scene. Perhaps he knows about a dragon. About this time is when you would want to roll initiative. Which is perception now. Well, it's whatever skill we were oh, using actually, last. There. Oh, right. Wait, where is it? I think it was perception. No, it's um, you actually are using the last skill as your perception roll. So if, if you were sneaking, it's your sneak. If you were perceiving, it's perception. There actually is no raw initiative that runs off of your um, itself anymore. You're, it's literally the last skill you were using during encounter mode and it's or uh, exploration mode, and then when it switches to encounter mode. All right, so that was the last one I used was perception. No, it was your athletics. You were running after him. So that's your initiative. Okay. The goblin is standing guard looking for trouble. He uses perception. Now, correct me if I'm wrong on this, Joe. No, oh, you are correct, sir. Okay. Yeah, because when it switches from exploration to combat, hmm. that's how you now do it, which is really cool. Yeah. So my athletics then? Yeah, whatever yeah. your last whatever your last roll was. Whatever you, whatever's, yeah. whatever's on the, the roll tracker. There that's are, where you were. No, it's well, not just skill like I was appraising, and here's your praise for initiative. There, oh. are, There is sort of like a list of 
um, things you can be doing during the exploration mode. Mm-hmm. You know. Well, if we're going with what was on the roll tracker for me, the last thing I rolled on was perception. Yeah. Well, yeah. you're yep. looking. You're looking to see where he ran off in the dark, right? Right. So, sure. where's my Jeff? Where's hmm. my roll for these guys for initiative? Uh, sometimes you got to fake it and just drop it in. You can overwrite any number that's on the tracker just by clicking on it and just sticking it in. Because I haven't yet to figure that. That'd be like a Jarek question for fantasy rolls, for fantasy grounds. I, well, are you talking just like in the game, or are you talking in fantasy grounds? Did you fantasy make character grounds. sheets for the NPCs? Yes, I've got them all right loaded in the combat tracker already. So, so there should be a little button that says start combat, and I think it will automatically give them a position. Oh, up there, maybe. Menu. Problem fixed. You just asked. The there it is. Initiative. <laughs> Excellent. Wonderful. We're all learning together. Now, someone wake me up so I can be scared to death for my life. Thank you. <laughs> Go up oh. to him and then scream in his ear, Try again! Uh, once again, my accent just seemed to have changed. I'm telling you, so I've got to get the, the back to the... Oh, yes. <laughs> With these headphones, it's it's, uh, it's hard to stay relevant in one accent. Now I can hear myself a little tracker. better. That's there we are. Better. You may pretend they're twice. You can't be there twice. Mm. Trying to fill some dead space. Sounds fair to me. Hasn't made it yet. So, did we ever get the proper description of our little goblin champion? This is like uh, pre before you came under me as a quick cameo in Age of Ashes, so that you still got the helmet, buddy, and the cloak. <laughs> no, well, I have no helmet because I'm just wearing the uh, studded leather armor. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Well, perhaps Sorry. this is the adventure where you find huh. the said helmet and become the you know the mystery man. Uh, that, you know. Maybe it could. Yeah. Yes. Well, we're on our way to you know Breach Hill. And you were there in my stream in the background, the guy that, you know, did made things happen, but never was seen or took the credit. Right. So, and all they yes, found it after that was so. So you hear that Rob, he can't die. He's immortal. <laughs> <laughs> He's, if we need to bring him back to blue. life, we just give him a few toes. I have a suit uh, for that too. Don't you worry. No, actually, okay. I, if you die at your corpse, this guy, a little dude in a helmet will come up and mourn you and then move on. And that's Joe's character. Right. So, okay. That is one thing that I would like, Death and dying in this is 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 kind of complicated now. It is and it isn't. And now that I've read it a few times, it it makes sense. Well, can we wait for like us to get hurt? For... Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, can't you see? I'm I'm preparing us because I'm going to like super us. miss. We're installing. Okay, we ready to go? Yes. Somebody wake me before we go. Go. Okay. So he turns to face you as you guys break through the trees. You stop. You see him. He sees you. Uh, that is you, Thaz. What are you going to do? Uh, five. Ten. I love it. He sees you. We see each other. Seeing is a pen. I am going to use um, my barbarian feat. Um, sudden charge. Uh, ah. uh, with a quick sprint, you dash up to uh, up to your foe and swing. Stride twice if you end your movement within melee reach of uh, at least one enemy. You can make what a melee move. Strike against that enemy. Okay. So... Twenty. Uh, hold on. It is twenty-five speed. So diagonally five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. You would go five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. You would end there. So you're not quite within range. Are we they still counting diagonals as two? Every other? No. Every other. Yeah, so your first diagonal is five, your second diagonal counts as ten. Yeah. The next one is five. It's yeah. a... So he still gets to there. Yeah. No, I'm asking. I don't remember. Yeah. If yes, you use the you can use the draw line thing too, and it'll it'll show you exactly how far you're moving on the scale map. I made sure I put the scale down to what uh, many scales were as well. Where is that draw line thing? Just so I know. You for just, you just right click and then the arrows come yeah. up. Oh, that's right. Pointer. Huh. Oh, oh. How, how do we do that? Um, there you go. Right click on the map. That's how you do it. And then you'll see your choices are a drawing. Now you're like making markings or an actual pointer. Uh, nope. Right click. Right click on the map. No. 
Okay, what are your options? I see it already. Look, I, see, I, see, I, see what we got here? Look, right click on the map, you want the pointer. See, it's a pointer as opposed to the drawing. So you click on the pointer and you get a whole bunch of pointers. Some are radius, some are this, some are that. And oh. uh, you can say yeah. I want to draw an arrow. Or in this case, I'll say remove pointers because now they're everywhere. Yes. <laughs> but it didn't yeah. measure. No, it didn't. No, it's because the way they've been, the way we've been entered in the combat tracker and and everything is a bit off. But that's fine. Yeah, I guess. On with Joe. Okay, so. Okay, so I'll use the last of my turns and just ready a block. That way, my shield is readied and gives me a plus two to my defense. Do you have reactive shield? That feat where you just go boom, my shield's up. No, I do not. So I have to. Okay. I have to use it. Otherwise, you would still have one action. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm using for my one action. What? May first. Get rid of the pointer. I close the combat window or the map. Just click on your character. It should get rid of it. Maybe. No, he's he's gotten rid of the map though. No, I got rid of the map. I need to know what the distance is between me and him. You won't get that. Okay. Uh, because we haven't entered the combat properly. We're, these are minis dropped on a map, not yep. technically yeah. gone through the, the proper channels. So but If somebody yes. can give me an estimate, I will tell you what I will do. Five, and I have three actions, correct? 15. 20, that is correct, sir. 30. 35. 35. 40. Okay. I'm going to then... Since I have a crossbow of a range of 120, uh -huh. I am going to fire a shot. Between. <laughs> he is doing his own thing, so he's not really paying attention. So, you've got a shot. Is there a point blank in this? Under 60 feet? Or under 30 feet or whatever? The dude's like 55 feet away. I haven't yeah. seen, I didn't see any point blank rules that I remember, Joe. Nope, not Seems anymore. Like so. Different system, different rules. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now you're playing? Read. Oh, I do <laughs> remember one rule, though, that since he's firing through a friendly, there's no longer like a plus four shield bonus to the bad guy. Bad guy only gets a plus one shield bonus for your buddy being in the way. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah, yeah because they've changed cover. We're, we're going shoot. to miss my buddy. Come on, I'm hoping for the best here. Move and then shoot. I can absolutely do that. How do I get the map back up? You should just have to click on the map. Go to images and maps. Oh, images and uh, maps. Okay. And it is battle map outdoor one. Scroll down to the, the on the right side, the little books. You see a P that's circled in white as opposed to just a book. Okay, you lost me on that, Jeff. <laughs> Look what I'm doing here. Look up there. Okay. Image and maps, right? See all the little books? Yeah. Pull down, see the P. And it's called battle outdoor one. That's the oh, one there we go. For the user at home who have signed into okay. Fantasy Grounds, so we're now right. you know too. So if I move... You can take your first action to move, of course. Or your second, or your third. If I move <laughs> well, here... Oh, he's going to move, yeah. Okay. Movement's so... the only thing that doesn't take penalties, really. Okay, so if I move here... Uh, difficult train can still slow him down. True. But as in, like... Yeah. Another hour it'll be difficult terrain if the terrain keeps coming. Perfect. So if I move there and then take a crossbow shot. Yes. Then we should be golden. The only negative you have is the minus one circumstance bonus I mentioned earlier. Do they have okay. quick draw on this where he's got to like or use move actions to pull it out so and load it and everything? You quick can draw get... still in there, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so my roll oops. Not to be that guy. You can target I'm carrying, him. I'm carrying can a I? staff. How Why don't you do switch that? to the crossbow? You should be able to click on your guy. Where is it? Oh, damn, you're right. I should have loaded the I should have loaded the battle tracker differently. Aha. Uh -huh. Rob. Yes. Dropping staff reaction, pulling crossbow, and loading it is one action. Right. Has he done that? Did you do that? No. Yes, he's already. That's his second action. He says, "I'm going to move." Yeah. Draw my crossbow. He can draw. It doesn't cost him anything to drop a staff. Right. Pulls and then he loads it. Or can you draw and load? That's what I was going to ask. It's so you to hard not to like go back to default first, but I just you know. Oh, well, that can be based on hmm, is the crossbow always loaded or is it not? 
<laughs> no, we're asking like for the rule. Does it take an action, an interaction, to load a crossbow? It does, does it not? Uh, depending yes. on the type of crossbow, it takes various types of actions. That's it's... right, because the pistol crossbow is free. Free. What kind you of crossbow do you got? Crossbow. It's just a standard crossbow, a simple ranged yeah, crossbow. It looks like a little shotgun or a rifle. So, so one has a bow like assembly mounted on a handheld frame called the tiller. The tiller has a mechanism to lock the D8 bolt or D10 through. is my question. D8, D8 or D10? D8. And it is a light crossbow. <laughs> yeah. So move, pull, load. Yeah. Okay. So that's it. Okay. Sorry, I'm just trying to avoid a whole bunch of hate mail going, wow, you guys just flew around while doing Matrix. And it's just like, no, 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 we are trying to go, you know, rules is written out of gate. Yeah. Okay. Because I have a weapon I need to pull out and load. That's why I'm asking. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm not trying to be that guy. I want to know for me. <laughs> I want to know Thank for my turn. I'm still uh, <clears throat> Imagine Dragon Yeah. Yep. Or, or for next time, just always state it's always loaded. Yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The crossbow right. is a reload of one. Heavy crossbow is a reload of two. Yeah. Okay. So we've moved. We've pulled, pulled it out, out a crossbow, loaded. Yeah, so there's that's three th actions you've done. That's three. So yeah. I'm done. Yeah. Okay. Talking is free if you want to point and threaten. Mm. <laughs> uh, well, not, thre not threaten, though. Yeah. Threaten is using a skill. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> I'm so going to use a skill. Can I wave? It. Can I wave at him? You can give him one of these if you want. It's up to <laughs> <Yeah>. you. <laughs> Come on! On oh, my crossbow, take that. Um, yeah. As this next incident happens, I need you guys. Do you, any of you have lore fairy or arcane will work as well? There's a sprinkle of, of multicolored lights. You're not there, Jeff. And Melon disappears. <laughs> he did say, and I quote, does anybody have that skill? Related to combat. I do. Sorry. <laughs> anybody, anyone on the map? Anybody so on the combat to, Just a straight lore doesn't do the job? <laughs> I'll give you straight yeah. lore, but a yeah. really, let really me, tough Let me clear up any confusion. <gasps> there <Yeah>. we go. <laughs> let me no. No, I do not. I'm a barbarian. My... My lore skill is on um fighting. So you're hauling ass to get up there, right? And then uh, you hear Mayford move behind you. Doesn't say anything. And then there's literally a splash of um, multicolored lights. And Velen disappears. Oh, God. You're, you're, you're ten feet from him. Like, seven feet from him. And he's gone. That sucks. <laughs> and then I click on him. And I go like this. How does spellcraft work? In this? Figure out what he counts. Hey, knife ears, you got detect magic? So I cast detect magic. Oh, does it? Okay, Joe, I've got one for you. Uh, sure. The ability he used, and this is just for, this is not going to be player knowledge. Okay. He's actually got the Fey bloodline which gives him the ability to just to be go invisible as soon as there's danger. He does not reappear until he pulls an action. act, but that is Eldritch magic, Fey magic. Okay. Would it detect? Uh, yeah, because it's still magic. All right, so you can determine on what type of magic it is, if it doesn't state, right? Because you have your four types of magic yes. now. But Fey so magic doesn't fall in there. Uh, you can. Uh, that's a good one. I don't know that. Here, let, me pull up... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. let me pull up the spell. Detect magic. Yeah, they... yeah, because I know like. Wouldn't fame every magic fall into a occult or arcana? See, Not that's the magic. thing. It's it's it's. Mm. Are you Cause asking? Because that... he does he get a ping from a guy that used instantaneous magic and the magic's used up? Is he going to glow on the spot? That's what I'm asking. Ah. The magic would have uh, to linger. Uh, right? You send Post out a pulse that registers the presence of magic. You can receive no information beyond the presence or absence of magic. You can choose to ignore magic you're fully aware of, such as magic items okay. and ongoing spells. 
um, you and your allies cast. Uh, the detect illusion magic only if that magic effect has a lower level than the level of your spell detect magic spell. However, items that have an illusion are but aren't deceptive in appearance uh, typically are detected normally. If that helps at all. It does. Is he carrying magical items on him? That can help. So it's not as detailed as the old detect magic. It's just a is it there or isn't it? You detect magic. Oh, okay. You see the circle I just drew? There's a ping. <laughs> yeah. No, what? Oh, yep. Yeah. Yep. That's where you sense magic. So how good are your words? <laughs> Can you direct me into that? <laughs> huh. 5, 10, 15. My good man! He is about 20 feet in front of you. You could just shoot to the ring. Follow my bolt. <laughs> Let me turn it's off the darkness. Yeah. Okay. Use a pointer and point. Put a, put a torch on the end of that bolt. Yeah. Actually, hold on one second. Let me take a look here. Light. Uh, Rob? Yes. Bolt. If you right click Person. on your map. I'm, that's what I'm going with. I think right. he's invisible. And then pull yep. up pointers. Then there's the three pointers with the X through it. You can remove all pointers. We get rid of the giant arrow that went from former wizard to. Oh, yeah. There, there you go. go. Thank you. But unfortunately, your circle's gone now, but I think I can bring something. He knows there. where it is. Yeah. The only thing I couldn't do with Fantasy Grounds was actually interact and play. <laughs> to actually try the, this interface. Everything else I got to muck with. Well, that's all right. I'm just trying to revision the, yeah. the circle. Okay. Then... Somewhere over here, there's magic. Yep. Make a perception roll, boys and girls. I refuse. Howling of a wolf. And the howling of the second wolf. Oh, that I can do. As to the west of you, and you can't miss it, Thaz, because they're not trying to hide it, two wolves come running into the clearing. Okay. We got new friends, and it looks like breakfast. Visible. Can you see them on your map? Yes. Okay, just want to make sure you can see them. And now they're going to join the <laughs> combat tracker. Pull up a little uh, wolf growling, snarling ambient for you there. Grr. Grr. <laughs> wolf, wolf. Yeah. Be really helpful if someone had some area of effect spells or potions or... Was conscious? <laughs> this is called first level. Yeah, here, here is we your all stick. die. <laughs> here is your stick. I know, it's okay. You can wake me for healing, I guess, at the end. I, I do like chosen. that we have more hit points than we used to. But so do yes. they. So do they. That's true, but still. Makes me feel like I'm a little bit more invincible. What's but the joke? Where the game Travelers, where you can actually die in character creation? Oh, that game is so much fun. I have two of the different editions. That game can be a whole hell of a lot of fun. Yes. But the thing we found out in our other podcast is about healing your wounds. Gets a little tricky. Magical healing at lower levels, not so good compared to skills. Mm -hmm. Battle medic. And if you don't have a battle medic, it gets really ugly for low levels. So something to keep hey guys in mind as we increase in level if we live <laughs> didn't the druid doesn't the druid get healing or not healing but um medic 
Medicine? I, I am a trained surgeon. I have medicine. I can handle your wound. I have a heal spell, yes. A reasonable rate. Okay. Just because the. Make the perception roll, Thaz. Another one? Yep. Okay. More people are coming. It just took them a couple rounds to get there. Perception. Ew. Eight. <laughs> it's not a complete failure, but it's. No, well, but you won't see them yet. It's uh, still raining. Still pouring. It's yeah. coming down sideways. Mayford. Have you are you moving closer or are you taking oh. a shot? No, I'm going to move closer. Um, is there a limit on how far I can move? Uh, your movement. What's your movement? Where right. do I find and double check that? Now that the uh, battle is joined, as it were, see if I can't kick up some action music for you. Dun, 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 dun. My speed is twenty five. Where do so I find? Your find? movement is twenty five. If I can move 25. Oh. Oh. 25. One more. Oh, five, then. Take one. I'm going to here. I'm going to take a shot. General midst of the circle. Okay, okay, just let me move him a little bit. Let's see if you get him. Going to Ted, you know, go for like a right in the middle. Okay. <clears throat> so the nice thing about this system is they've changed the misperception chance that other systems and stuff used to have. It would be like, you know, 20% chance of miss, 50% chance of miss, blah, 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 blah. Now it's just a simple DC flat roll, yep. which the DM decides on the difficulty. And you roll on that. You either hit or you miss. Pretty simple. <laughs> Give me the shot, Mayford. D8, so I can grab a D8 from here. Let's still make an attack roll, though. You're going to make an attack roll first. Okay, how do I do that? Uh, just go to your crossbow. Yes. Grab the, 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 there'll be a little D20 icon beside it. Okay, I got to get the right one. Okay, that didn't seem to work. Well, there we go. Eight plus two. No. It goes off into the trees. But where you have moved, you've actually... Uh, you see the wolves. They've taken their turn to go like this. Because wolves move very, very fast. <laughs> and then they both get struck with missiles of some sort. And that's when you see um, Abrigal and the wizard's brother, both with crossbows entering the other side of the clearing and taking shots. That takes us back to you, my friendly neighborhood monk. Oh, sorry, no, my barbarian, my half orc. Thoughts, it's your your move now. Yep. Um... And because this happens, they turn this way. Well, I'm going to go forward. To I'm guessing here. now you're within you're within range to use your uh, lunge attack. Eh? For your your cool barbarian charge now. Yeah, but I'm going to do that and then swing at it twice instead. So I'm going to move and attack twice. Okay. That's what a minus four on both? No. No. The first Ho one is normal. 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 The oh, second okay. one is minus four. It actually says so on your character sheet. Where? Cool. Oh, I see it now. Very it's good. Cool. <laughs> Where? <laughs> right there. Where? And the second one. Ew, and I miss with both, probably. Uh, situational. Let me check something here. Yeah, no, no. You, you miss both times. And that allows him to turn and snap at you. Uh, two. Yeah. 
What is your um, DC? My AC is 15. Oh, he snaps at you, but does not quite get you. But you do cause him to turn around again and face you right there. There we go. And then while they're reloading, he does that, which takes us back to... He does that? <laughs> okay. there, is an, there is an audio-only audience we're trying to partake <laughs> in. He does that. The, he... the, the, wolf, the wolves turn and split. One heads, one is now closing with... Um, Thaws directly. He's going to take him on face to face. The other one is turned to face the guys to face Abergol and Trial loading their weapons. They'll have to reroll initiative to see who gets that one because it's a crappy, crappy night. So, Mayford. I am going to cast. I think you missed me there, Chief. Where are you? Still waiting to be wakened, put in the combat, anything? Just. Open to be woken. Like, oh, all jokes aside, if, if I'm sleeping through this stuff, you want to say I'm a sound sleeper? No problem. No, no, no. I'm having I, fun I, I with my wolf up. sounds, but it's like. Oh, my apologies. I forgot that we woke you up. Let's get you in here. Okay. I don't mean mine, even mine going dead last and, you know, hanging back with the goblin guarding, oh, no, you, you know, the wagon. No, no, you can come up. You can, you can close with Abergol and Trial because they stopped to get their weapons. Like, they weren't carrying their weapons when this happened. They had to go grab their weapons and then follow. So, where is. Dr. Quack. Quack. Dr. Quack. Quack. Quacky, quacky. Q-U-E-C-K. <laughs> it's a real gnomish name. Long tradition of gnomes. Well, Quack, you come in with your last of your attack. You'll finish up. You'll have one action once you get here. i got to shrink you down a little bit because you're little. I resemble that remark. There we go. So you would come in from about there. And you have one action left when you've closed the distance. Okay. Uh, try to perceive exactly the situation, like what is going on. Take, okay, well, take you, in the you, battlefield, even if it costs Abigail me that action. is loading his crossbow, so is Trio right beside you. Um, there. So I mean, is, like, do you want me to give you a perception check to? Uh... No, you can't miss this. That wolf is breathing hot and heavy. Okay. Feet from you. If you wish to see what's going on in the rest of the battlefield, then use your last one as a perception check. Okay. Like I'm running into the two brothers, and well, no. there's, there's no, no. a wolf. The one brother, Velen, is missing. He he turned he turned invisible, and he he uh, buck shot it out of here. So who's next to me? That is Abrigal, the dwarf, the caravan and guy, Triel, okay. his brother. All right. Very well. And uh, yeah, there we go. Range combatant and a bit of a surgical healer, so I'm a little bit close for comfort. I think I'd like to uh, just position myself just back a little bit. So they have to uh, sort of go by them. You could go right behind them if you wanted to. No, no, I want a shot. If it doesn't. Oh, okay. Yeah, but gotcha. Anyway, back up. Okay, so you use your last attack to actually do a defensive retreat. Hmm? So that takes us to the top of the round, which is. Thaws, I believe. Yeah, Thaws, yes. Mayford, Wolves, those guys, and you. Okay. Um, I'm going to go again with Fine then, be that way. And I'm going to rage and drop the... Uh, I'm going to drop the shield and the um, neck splitter and rage and grab my maul off my back. Okay. And hit him. Actions. Is does anybody know if there's a way to actually act like make rage a condition in fantasy uh, grounds? No. A f no. Okay. We'd have to. What it is is once we've been playing a bit and we know what the effect is, I'll create it. Right. But right so now that's I just going to be my level. That goes in the notes. Create that for fire. next week. So, so my any spell or effect you want, you just have to do it yourself, and then I import it to you. Okay. That's constitution is two, so it's three temporary. Is it, if it's something that's written in the core book, he should be able to pull it out of the core book and drop it into drop his character. Drop it on. Yeah. But it may not have an effect condition. Like we're looking because you can go into effects, right, and say, okay, right. I'm visible, I'm this, I'm that. Okay. There isn't one for rage. So I'm yeah. clumsy. 
<laughs> no, no, no. Um, which is what a minus whatever the number states. Yeah. So clumsy, and then I'll have a numerical number behind it. Uh, that is a miss. <laughs> okay, so Mayford, your friend. Oh, I is... haven't rolled anything yet. Oh, is that not your one down there? Oh, that's not. No, I don't. How I. Not sure how that one happened. Okay, give me give me another roll. Yeah, um, I'll get the combat tracker worked out for the next session. I know what I did wrong. I was just trying to find out what clumsy actually did. Gives you a minus one to okay. everything. Everything. Okay, so it's just a minus one. All right. Well, if it's clumsy one, then it's minus one. Clumsy two, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Gotcha. It just says clumsy one. Yeah, so it's minus one to everything. Gotcha. I wouldn't want to be sitting too close to the gnome. <laughs> <laughs> nice and of course it would help if I actually grab the weapon when doing that what's your weapon bonus uh, for that it is a plus 4 so 20 so you will hit 19 how do you remove condition uh, you'd have to go into the condition and take it off the effects are. Oh, I see it. Never mind. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I could put a condition on your guy for you, playing around. You know, see if it could work this out while you guys are working that out. But all I can do is make myself succumb to some effect. So. Yes. So do I hit? Yes. With a mighty thwack. Ah. Uh. But meaty. Your pick. You pick. You pick the adjective. Uh, Eleven damage. Uh, okay, so now it's his turn, and he says, "Enough of this, because I'm only a wolf. I'm out of here." Then, Trio takes a shot at the fleeing one. And with a natural 20. Sorry, did Jared just hit the wolf? Yep. Yes. And it ran away. Because Fast Hal took the damage. Just saying. That's damage eight to fast hell, partially absorbed status yeah, I, wounded. I, I just got that too. <laughs> I didn't um, even see that. Yeah, yeah, there's there's no way for me to actually select who I'm fighting. No, but there, the, the DM, even though he's buggered the tracker, he can actually select a target for you in the tracker. And right. I didn't. I right. must have clicked the wrong way. Okay. <laughs> you can <laughs> see temporary damage. Yeah. But, like I said, um, Trial hits the wolf, but it doesn't kill the wolf, so the wolf finishes his action. He buggers off the screen there. But not before. Quek, you have one. It's your turn. Okay. As a move, I will draw ammunition for my blowgun. Gotcha. As, an, as an interaction, second move, I will apply some venom. Okay. Okay. That's I, interaction. That's fine. Sorry, I have, well, I have alchemical formulas. Yes. Um, so... As an alchemist, I get to choose two of three out of the healing sector. Then I have two of my own that I can pull out of the sort of generic list. There's yep. a lot of things in alchemy that can hurt people, and I do need to defend myself once in a while. So <laughs> going with sort of the arsenic and old lace, as well as, you know, just um, you never know when you're going to com come across a good old centipede or something. Um, going into my inventory here. I can pull some giant centipede venom and apply it. However, activation of this is like three chevrons, so I'm assuming it's going to take like a while to apply it? If it's three chevrons, that means Plus you're... To activate it. It's consumable or injury poison, which means I can basically put it on a weapon and stab someone, or in my case, use my blowgun. Um, and it says activation three to interact. So it does that be... mean it takes a whole round till it hits no. you, or like till it becomes 
in your does system. Take, does, oh, that's how. Be, sorry, that's how long it takes for the poison to kick in. Yes, yeah, so, so it's the third round. It would, at the end, of, at the at, you, at the final action, it would kick in. Right. So I have to pull the juice, pull the pin, apply. Yes. And wait. Next round, I'll have a centipede venomed blowgun dart in my hand. Okay, that takes. I'm some... assuming, yeah, Joe. Uh, Interacting well, with my own gear is how much? Depending on the gear. A blowgun, a blowgun <laughs> dart, which is I, ammunition, which is kind of solitary. A yeah, dangerous, a dangerous hold compound. On, hold on. What? Hold on. Yeah. It's, don't, don't add all the the extra stuff. A blowgun has what for your actions? It's in your book, on yeah, your character sheet. Straight. Oh, okay. Is it one action? To load, or is it? Well, it's it's the action? applying the compound that I'm because the yeah I think is slowing me down here. I say it's you know what I'm reading that wrong. It reads three actions: draw, poison, blow. He still gets the action this round. It's just he takes him the entire three actions to do it. Yeah, so but it I don't have it in my hand. I have nothing in my hands. I got to pull up my weapon. That's an action. Right? Just to, just to get the blow gun out. But that's just a reaction. That's not. De yeah, depending on the weapon. It's a reaction. It's only a blowgun. It can be in your pocket. You know what I mean? It's not like you've got it tied up or tied to your back. What can you say, though? I'm just trying to Hell, be there. Hell, you could have it hanging around your neck. Yeah. Where's my it, stuff? It, it will be explained on your... In your oh, inventory. Yeah. In your inventory. It should tell you. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bum. Yeah, well. Here we go. Uh, piercing range, reload one. Group okay. dart, range 20 feet. Simple, agile, non-lethal. So you're fast alchemying this? Yeah. Uh, very good question. Uh, this, <laughs> is one of the, this is one of the um, little, at least a thing I found confusing about the alchemist is you either have to have stuff pre-made that is on your body or you use fast alchemy, which allows you to make it on the something spot. really quick, but it only lasts a turn. Okay. Comparatively, if you make it like, say, for a wizard or something, prepping for his spells for the day, you can prep stuff for the day. Mm -hmm. Right. And you make batches of one or something like that. Like it's a full batch. Okay. Instead of a single item. I do have alchemy tools. Quick alchemy costs me a chevron. I can make a batch of infused regents. Swiftly mix up a short alchemy item to use at a moment's notice. You create a single alchemical item of your advanced alchemy level or lower that's in your formula book without having to spend the normal monetary cost in alchemical regents or needing to attempt a crafting check. So I could just make it without trying to make it up. Right. Yeah. If the item has the infused trait, but it remains potent only until the start of your next turn. So I can make venom as Wait, opposed to what? having a bottle of venom. Hmm? Yep. Yep. Is uh. Yeah. I mean, it's like because the action is one chevron, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. You, so you can make it on the spot, but that leaves you only two more actions. Two more actions until so, that is no good. Okay, but do I have to like draw my tools? Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's part of the action. Okay. So I whip out my kit. Right. Yep. You, you make, make your poison. Make, make venom. Yep. Okay. Then I gotta draw my blowgun, or draw the ammo, and yep. put it together. Apply it. <laughs> yeah. Which is two, three. Yeah. That which is two, and, and the, at least it states that uh, applying is a. Yeah. It's not a quick. Well, like I said, the guy's got to pull his crossbow bolt and load it as an action. Right. The yep. reload of a blowgun is a full it action. One action, no more one full action. No full action. More. Sorry, one I mean like, one full economy one action chevron. in this. Like say, like one chevron, <laughs> just like him rolling the crossbow. So, like I said, I've got to, yeah. I just want to know about applying it to a weapon, which should be at least an action, if not more. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think said. your problem is the school that you chose. You're really good with antidotes and anti plague, right? I have. A choice between three anti anti plague anti uh anyway before i reveal all my secrets what are you going with well i'm just saying that those are the things that when you use quick alchemy 
you don't actually spend any reagents. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. I see what you're saying. I've got to stay within my field. You have to stay within your field. So you, if you have reagents that could make okay. said poison, you can still do quick alchemy. But anything outside your field costs those reagents. Okay. That's how I'm reading it okay. right now. Well, there's no poisoner. You either blow stuff up, heal people, or go mutant man. As far as, as, as far as I know, so like I said, the item of I don't, I'm not making venom. I carry it, right? Right. So yeah. I don't have to make it. I've actually got it. Yeah. So you just my, apply it. So I have to pull it out and apply it. Yep. Pull my That's... ammo. So at the very least, this is one or two here. Yeah. Well, yeah. To apply your agent to your ammunition is one. Right. What about pulling everything out? That's got to be at least one, yeah? That, that, that's one. Just one. Okay. So If you have weapon in hand. Nope. Do you have weapon in hand? Nope. I came up on the seed, right? So yeah. it's like, right. First, I want to put the juice on the dart. Okay. One but... pocket juice, one pocket dart, apply, all together one action. Yeah, is that what you're telling me? I just don't want to <laughs> cheat the system. Nope. That's the system. Applying to yeah. an item yeah. is one action. Okay. Retrieving stowed, ac stowed item. Yeah. Where is it? Is it in your backpack or is it on your person? Belt it's, pouch. it's in my belt pouch. Which is one full action. Or right. sorry, one action to take right. anything out of a pouch. One yep. chevron. Right. So one I chevron. Take it out. Apply. Yep. That's two. Yeah. Then, then I get my gun. Low gun. And I'm done. Standing here with a poison dart and a blow gun. It, next loaded. round. Next one. Loaded. Loaded. It takes it, but it takes a round to reload. I have to pull my blow gun out. You're missing everything here, Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Break it down simple. Okay. I take out my item. Right. My like, dart. Just, right, my right. dart. My okay. dart. Okay. Yep. One chevron. Yep. Applying. Free. Okay. Taking out blow gun. Another chevron. Right. Now, what does that mean? Yeah, you, you skipped the part where I pulled out the venom because it's an item. No quickie. You wouldn't pull the venom. You'd dip your dart into the pouch. Okay. I'm here barehanded. Look to my left. I got hiding in a pouch. I got venom, an actual item, like a potion, stuff I bought. On my other side of my belt, I have ammo. I have to pull both. They are actions to pull them just to get them That's, out, right? That is, you, you, yes. Everything has an action. Some are, as yeah, the yeah. old terminology, are free. Yeah. Do you, do you know which ones are free? No, but I do know it, I do know it costs an action to reload a blowgun. This is what I'm saying. Like, if a regular guy pulls the gun first and then reloads it with a second action, puts it in, so that's two, and fires it off, <coughs> that's three. I could do all that. However, I want to poison my dart, and I need okay. both hands for that. So yeah, I'm not right. pulling the gun first. I'm um, pulling my ammo. I'm pulling the stuff uh, and applying. Okay, that's at least two, if not three. Yeah. Jeff, good, sir. Yes. Um, applying alchemical poisons uses interact actions. Which yeah. is free. Which is free. Which is free. Old free actions. That's why I said slow down <laughs> to figure it out. Applying a poison to a weapon or another item requires two hands, with yep. one hand holding the weapon or yeah. item. Yeah, item. My dart. So... What happened to Quick Alchemy had to be in my field, and I'm using an outside reagent. That's what's what's why I thought I had to go through all the chevrons. Right. So an interact is is that a free action or whatever it used to be a free action? Yes. yes. Okay. So, and you only get one of them per turn, I yes. think. Right. Yes. So yeah. you use your free one time per round action to apply the poison that you just created. Didn't create it. That's what that's what I'm saying. Sorry, guy. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> You already had it, right? Right. So and that's why I have to pull it because I'm not making it. It's an item itself that I have to pull instant action. That I have to get my ammo out, whether I'm reloading into the gun or just hanging onto it. That's another pull. That's two chevrons. Now I put them together. Even if I put them together for free, I'm still at two chevrons. I gotta pull my gun, my tube. So I'm standing there at the end of my round with a poison dart and a blowgun, and I'm pretty much done. Or right. worse, I haven't even got that far. It's like I said, don't want to no, cheat the system. It will boys. be loaded. It will be loaded. Um, I'll do some more digging after this session, but that's why it's three chevrons. I was just reading something about the actions here. Okay. Because Pull gun, it's, it's... load gun, shoot gun, three actions. Okay. Pull gun, drop gun, pull juice, 
pull dart, add together, pick up, get like, the gun has to come out last because I need two hands to put shit together, to smear juice on my ammo. That's what's got you guys screwed up. I gotta pull the venom. I gotta pull the dart. It has nothing to do with loading the dart. It's an item right. that I'm about to mix with something else. Even if, you, even if you're really nice and say, waha, I pull both in one chevron. Then I gotta put them together. Not all interactions are free, boys. Some of them are, but not all of them. Applying something to a weapon is, and you just said it. It's an interaction. Right, but not all interactions are free. They cost chevrons, do they not? Okay, the call for now, Jeff. Yeah. yeah. To split the difference is you're loaded at the end of the round. Okay. Because I know I was reading about this earlier. There is a step I'm missing, but we're really bogging down with this. Here's what I'm going to say happened. You come out as you're running out, you're holding your blowgun in one hand. Let's save it some trouble. Mm. Hold your blowgun while you were running. Okay. That means by the time you get to here, you'll be able to fire on the next round. Okay. Um, so it's out, I just tuck it under my arm and start doodling with two hands. Like, this is the thing, right? Actually, no, because you see if do you have a bandolier or are you wearing only belt pouches? Just have like the belt pouch thing going. Double check your your gear. You should have a set of bandoliers. Anyway, as you were saying, moving on. Your bandoliers. Uh Mayfrit, make a perception check as you hear something behind you. Four. <laughs> oh okay. thanks for a ten. That's enough because it's not hard to miss because they're rising up out of the right out of the ground behind you. Oh, and you are the second one. The ground tears open about ten feet, ten fifteen feet behind you, and then boink and boink. The haunting smell of the grave envelops you. Oh my, you stink. <laughs> I'm going to smell quick... bad. <laughs> I am quickly going to turn around and cast Produce Flame. Works for me. I will shrink them down. They're very big. <laughs> They're not monstrously huge. They're just regular huge. But yeah, right behind you, these two skeleton guards pop up out of the, gar up, up out of the grass. And that means you turn around like this. And you're now facing two skeleton guards. I will cast Produce Flame, the one on my left. Okay. And then he comes back over here. He becomes visible again. And then just to the just to your immediate left, Velen appears. So roll roll your attack. Then it will be Thaz, the wolf. Uh both these guys are switching weapons. So they'll have one attack at the end of the round, and then you okay. okay. Was so as the, skeletons, as the skeletons quietly tear out of the ground, all you smell is the smell of the grave and see them rise up behind you. And then you notice in your peripheral vision, Velen materializes. So which one are you attacking? Hmm. I think that we're going to head over and grab Velen. You're going to go after Velen? Yep. Okay. Where are you at? That's... You get to turn around free. So you're going to throw the fireball at Velen? Fireball. Fireball. Yes, we're going <laughs> to throw it at Velen. Okay. So we're going to turn you a little bit more. Like that. There we go. And go for it. What was your strike? It was an eight. Oh, okay. Well then, yeah. It just seems to burst over him, doing no real damage. 
Uh, that takes us to Thaz Tall. Um, well, I'm enraged, so... Yeah, like you're enraged. I want to see what um, happens here. Well, they really kind of toned down rage now, but... um. So this is turn two for rage for me. I have it for a minute, so that means I have it for another five turns. Yep. Okay. Um, I'm going to. I think the closest one is the skeletal guard too. Make your perception roll. Otherwise, you don't notice them coming to the ground. You are raging and going the other way after the walls. And skeletons don't make a lot of noise other than the tearing of the earth, which is being covered up by the rumble of the uh, storm. Okay. It's turning you around. So turn around. Oh, I'm glad you got a high perception. That is enough because, I mean, like I said, it's not like they're try actively trying to hide. So you turn this way and... 15, 20, What's next? 25. Um, okay, the one skeleton's kind of in the middle of that grid section. Is it closer to Mephit? Or is it close... Like, where... Guard skeleton number two, what square is he actually in? We'll put them in this square to make your life simple. There you go. Okay, thank you. So I'm going to go. Ooh. Yes, he's okay. within your 25 foot move. Go to there. And I will swing batter, batter, batter. At a minus one. Since I'm still clumsy, wielding a enormous mallet. And I'm going to use your femur for a toothpick later. What's your roll? That's what I'm trying to do. It keeps me. Come on, you can do it. Damn. Come on, everybody. Nope. <laughs> Swing and a miss. <laughs> Just wait. I'll hit you eventually. Stop swinging around. <laughs> Stop moving. <laughs> okay, that takes us to. These guys. Arbigal attacks with a. Argal swings and misses. <laughs> no. But Triel gets a critical hit and cleaves the wolf in half. So that one's down. Now, our friendly neighborhood gnome. Sorry. Um, Abrigal swings and misses terribly. He's he's going to be pulling his axe out of the ground for about the next two rounds. He missed that badly. Okay. Um, but I, I'm, willing, I'm willing to nope. take more actions because interact is talking about using like chevrons to do this kind of stuff. Yeah. So yeah, interact is one chevron. Yeah. Get an uh, unattended or stored object. Pulling stuff out is one. Manipulating objects like applying a poison would be two. Pulling my weapon. You're being really nice saying it's loaded, but I'm willing to say I'm starting to load. It's up to you. No, I'll give you a little. So you pulled some action on your way here. Okay. Like you just come running up with your hands. Okay. Up, you're like, ah. like these guys came in, they pulled their swords on the way. Right. So I will move to the north to get a clear shot about 15 feet. I will load and I will shoot. At? The wolf. The wolf Exposed flank. Cut. Sorry? Nope. He got cut in half in the last round. Oh. Trail just pulling his sword out of him now. But make your perception roll, because you actually have a bit of a line of sight there. Okay. So as you turn the other way, shoot you down the fleeing one. <laughs> you actually catch um Mayford shooting a fireball at Velen. But not not the two and not the two uh, skeletons. <laughs> and then you see the half orc swing and a miss. Okay. Uh, 17, taking in the, the second battle. Yep. Okay, and I'm done. Okay, so this guy is... I'm not going to delete the token because the dead carcass will stay there, but this guy gets out of, gets out of range because nobody fought with him. Okay, boys and girls, here's how it stands. Mayfert, you've picked a fight with Velen. <laughs> who was happily not attacking you, but he's changed his mind. Uh, the skeleton guards uh, will be up for their next round. 
um, Abrigal and Triel will be use their final action after draw. Well, Abu can come to here in this round. Uh, Quack. Yes, sir. What is your next planned move? I'm a little confused. The wolves have been killed and drawn off, but the people are still fighting one another. And I'm well, seeing new opponents in the dark that are, you know, we're fighting somebody. Thank you. Do you want to say or do anything? Because you're the only one who's standing back and seeing what's going on. Like I said, you've seen Mayfruit fire Fireball and Velen. Mm -hmm. And then... Okay, there's an action here talking about pointing out. It takes yes. a chevron. So I'm going to point out what I believe is going on, whether it's right or wrong. You know, point out the, to, to my allies. So uh, the dwarf, believe my story. Yes. Right? So I'll take a move. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Up to get closer. And to yes. use an action to point out what's going on to the dwarf, you know, what I, what I think is going on here. There's something attacking something. Everyone's clustered up fighting each other. I don't, I don't get it. You know, your men are attacking your men. Get your shit together. Okay. So, um... Okay. Um, and, uh... Oh. I think I'm going to take a second move. Head north here. Five... 20 here and I actually just cover our butts you know like the wolves the wolf ran off that way and we've killed one but yep. yeah okay cover okay. there's cover the dwarf six uh Velen is engaged in preparing a spell this entire time just for the for you Mayford like he doesn't immediately react he's he's dangerously waving his hands and starting to prepare a spell but it'll take him the rest of this round to do it. Yeah, Skeleton A decides that uh, he doesn't want to hit anything either. And Skeleton B, what is your AC, Thaz? You're a little off the mic there, Rob. Oh, what's your what's your um, AC, Thaz? Uh, it is 15 still, I think. Hold on, I gotta switch back to the main. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, fifteen. Let's Ooh, he barely misses you yet again. These are some useless skeletons. <laughs> these are these aren't elite skeletons. Oh, sorry, it's fourteen because I take a minus one because I'm clumsy. Oh, okay, then he will hit you for eight points. Ooh, full damage. my combat tracker go um i have three points uh for temporary hit points so those are gone and then where are you whatever else is after that so you take to take five more off Do I need to do that, or is that in the combat tracker? No, see, I screwed up the tracker from the beginning. That was my fault. I shouldn't have okay. done it that way. So I will have to will have to do it. Okay. So. Where is it? So that would be a total of 13. There we go. So, yeah, you've taken a bit of damage, my friend. You've taken a bit of damage. You're starting to feel it. Okay, so that takes us back to... So much so for hadn't broken the tracker. <laughs> okay, so that would take us back to... Nope. Harbagol chooses to close and put himself between you two for his action, then he throws up his arms like this <laughs> before uh, you can react, and Trial comes up behind you. And that takes us back to Quack. You're on deck, Quack. Uh, 
technically you know here. r6 anything coming in oh you clever man you you turned to look the other way like so i was covering the six they're, they'll st these boys will sort things out they're all well civilized here uh you see four or five shadowy figures cut across the end of the clearing they don't stop but they just cut across the end of the clearing headed headed north okay like they're not trying to hide. They just happen to be in the shadows in the rain. So that's all. No, you're but if, um, like I said, I'm hoping this might help diffuse that. You know, the enemy of my enemy is my friend, sister's cousin's former roommate. Yes. Um, I use a second action to point out. You know, start shouting a warning. We are not alone, boys. There's still something out there. That kind of thing. And back at camp. And I'm gonna move this <laughs> <Yay>! one. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mayford. Um, Abergol has set himself between you and Velen and thrown up his hands. Still your action. So you decide what you're going to do while I go back to camp for a second. Okay. Ock, make a perception roll, please. Ah, sure I can once I pull up my character sheet again. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting low on time, Rob. Yep. I'm about to wrap it up, actually. Yep. I'm getting there. Sorry. I was we, we, we must hold out long enough for the mighty Ook to do something. Ock, 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 Ock. It's easy, Ock. <laughs> I've known you five Auk. minutes. <laughs> A perception of seven. Okay, unbeknownst to Ock, there are several skeletons enclosing the uh, campgrounds now. So, as it stands, uh, Mayford, I need to know your final action. Are you going to finish? Are you are you going to go after Velen, or are you going to? Pay attention to the dwarf who went, whoa! No, I think I'm going to pay attention to the dwarf and go, okay, let's turn around and... No, dwarf. That's here, right? The guy that's in between? Yes. I'm going to pay attention to him and see exactly what he's going to do. Um, I'm going to change... Can't we all just get along? <laughs> No, apparently not. I think we're going to change weapons back to the bow staff. Okay, so you're going back to your bow staff, so that would be one action. And I can move for free, correct? No, it's still going to cost you one action. Hmm. You can still move and attack. I was to go here. Yes. And I have a spell that requires two chevron. I have two to do that, correct? You start casting it now, and it only needs one chevron out of your next round. Okay, then I'm going to start a cast for a shocking grasp. Okay, and that takes us to... Does? Is he an undead fighter that has undead attack of opportunity? <laughs> Actually, they don't. Oh, good. <laughs> I, was, I thought about that earlier. Oh, I love how you can walk up right in their face and go, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Uh, they took that out of the rule system. <laughs> All right, so I guess I'm swinging my giant club again. Well, Come on, hammer. make some contact. Yeah, that's the hope. Bada, bada. There oh, we go. Better. Beat. And then now for my damage. You're just beating the crap out of yourself, according to this. I know, and I don't want <laughs> yeah. to not do that. Uh, he can do it. What you need to do is click on, there should be, not, you can't see it, but Rob will be able to see a target marker next to the character. A fixed. circle, right? Yeah, I fixed it. Yeah. Just now, I realized what it was, and I was like, oh yeah, that click there. <laughs> yeah. You're not pounding yourself in the head, just because so, I made a mistake. So hopefully this damage actually gets applied to the creature. Yes, I will apply it to the creature. You can also reverse the damage on, on tasks just by overriding the numbers by clicking in the combat yeah. tracker. That's what I've been doing. So 12 damage. And you crush him into pace. You crush him into pace. He flies apart at a molecular level. These are not tough skeletons. Oh, yeah. Um, as... <laughs> oh, you had me at molecular. <laughs> <laughs> As as over uh, and Mayfort, over your left shoulder, a sword comes flying because Trial just doesn't bother trying to close. He just throws his sword, and 
Uh, it's not a great hit, but he spins the skeleton to one side, just lops off one of his arms, and that takes us to... Whoa, good job. That's you, Mr. Gnome. What? <laughs> hmm? Hmm? Ock, you start to hear screams from the camp down the way. And actually, you guys over here hear the screams as well, because they're not that far away. Looks to be uh, them. Finish your shocking grasp, Mayfurt. Let's we'll see how much damage you do. That'll dictate where we go next. Oh, oh look at that lovely three. Plus, uh, I get a bell wisdom, right? I get a bonus. Yes. That would be six to decide whether I hit or not. Guys, that's a, that, with a, if you miss with a shocking grasp, what happens? When you uh, you mean fail? Is the spell yes. expended? Is it expended? He only rolled a six, which means he misses. Yep. Yeah. Hit or hit or miss, you still spend. Yeah. Okay, just making sure. Okay, you you do this. You take the shot. It doesn't happen. Do you have any actions left? That would be the first one out of the That's round, right? right? Two. That's right. Chalking grasp is two two chevrons. Yeah, but you had we used what one from last round, one in this round. Yeah, so two. then I have so I have wow. two. But because it's no, that's a level one, correct? Let's I haven't prepared. Are we lucky enough that it actually holds within this round? Yes, yeah. it should. Oops. You get three swings to try to set the spell off, or is that just? Well, no. He finished, he started shocking grasp last time. Yeah. It ate into this one. Now he's got two actions left in this right. He's got two actions left before he moves to the next combatant. Okay, so since I already have my bow staff in my hand, I can attempt crack with my bow staff. Okay, give it a shot. Level zero. 13 plus two Love. with the plus two that says here in the attacks that added to that 14 so I'd have a 16 well, that's enough to hit him all right and then my damage is a 1d8 plus two yo come on roll high this one right here I got a 10 yeah, again, you you crack him. You do enough damage that he he crumbles to the ground yet again. So that is those two down. <laughs> so you've driven them to the ground, and as you guys drop these skeletons down, you start hearing screams from behind you. Ock, you can't yeah. help it now. You start counting. I don't think you need to make a math roll for this you count at least six shambling forms uh, approaching the ring of um, of uh, uh, the rest of the caravan, the, the ring of trailers there. Fair enough. And on that note, everybody in the clearing looks up, looks around, and Abrigol, as soon as he hears a scream, starts running, so does Trial. Velen disappears yet again. What do we do? <laughs> you turning around. I'm watching right. our six. Do, 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 you boys just sort this out. And that. I presume the rest of you are going to flee back to camp. You don't have to. I mean, <laughs> you don't have to go back to camp. But bear in mind, all your stuff's there. Well, I guess Ock Festering Tooth is protecting so all. Are we, is it obvious, or someone given an all clear that we're all tangos down kind of thing? Yeah, because as soon as he throws the sword and then he he, uh, he, he hits him, uh, the shocking grass misses, but with one fell swoop, Mayford just comes across the other way, finishes him off. And then the dwarf looks up, starts running, trail starts running, and Velen disappears. Okay. The foreshadowing figures, this all doing the math, they kind of went that away. Then we hear screams that away. Yeah, they went Our north. camp is that away. But four figures ran the other way. 
Now, you do the math. That's how many bodies you left back at camp. Hmm. Other than the <laughs> two elves. There were, there were two elves, the shadowy figure, and the other guy. Yeah. That's... You just kind of go... Hmm. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, who's left that camp? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that leaves Auk at we're, camp we're by himself. To camp, boys. <laughs> there we go. If you guys are done, yeah. Yeah. Hey, I'm watching our six little more wolves and shit doesn't come out. You guys, you know, the dwarf, the three of you make a collective decision. Yeah, sure. Who's I'll, that I'll chop we left back at camp? We better go see what's going on. He's got our stuff. <laughs> He's doing his job. Yeah, we don't know right. stuff. <laughs> we're not there. <laughs> I don't know this guy from my grandma. All right. Well, you could, you could pick me up and argue on the way back. These little feet don't run so quickly. Well, let's go. Okay, Master Blaster, let's do it. Grab It'll head. take you three rounds <laughs> to get back to where you were. Put me up on your shoulders. I'll be a blowgun turret. <laughs> Which means you would actually still be enraged when we pick up again, Jared. All right. No, I won't. Not anymore. As soon as battle's done, I lose rage. The if battle's not to... over. Look, our friends are in danger. Come on, big ones. <laughs> so that's, that was going to be my question. Does it not? If the battle hasn't actually finished, do you stay in rage? Here, I'll read you the rage description, and you can. What happens make... if I kick you in the shins on the way yeah, back? Yeah, really. Next time. Oh, make fun of you on the next show. On the yeah. When when we resume, I'll slap you in the back of the head with my staff. Yeah. It's when the, yeah your staff. Remember, use your staff. Okay. Uh don't make me put it in print it and last for we... one minute until there are no enemies that you can perceive okay or fair until enough. you nope. fall right. unconscious whichever you perceive no you don't perceive them because they're too far away yeah so right. you shake it off and then go running after the rest of them <laughs> right good loo boys until the next time we have lots to learn but thank you for joining us yes <laughs> <laughs> So oh, much for that caravan. Yeah. <laughs> Man, we should just join the I'm druid in the one. wild and just embrace Look at nature. this empty caravan that we can now loot. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> Already on that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hawk's like just slowly walking away. Luke is like, oh, okay, Cog's not other me. My Isn't stuff, back off. Legs on it. Luke just becomes like a homeless dude guarding his cart. Back off, my stuff, my stuff. I'm glad we didn't pay for this ride. All right. Well, yeah, but you did pay. take money to protect this that, ride. That's true. And, and uh, details, details. And Ook took it so literally, he wouldn't leave the ride. He protected the physical cart as opposed to the people that would pay him. But hey, letter of the law, right? That's all the time we got for right now, Rob. That's a perfect ending for now. Say good night, Rob. Good, good, good night, night, Rob. Everybody. Thank, Thank you, everybody, you Rob. Co yeah. <laughs> nudge, nudge. Oh, I, app I appreciate everybody showing up and those of you watching at home. Thank you very much. Yes. So, learning as we go, painfully obvious. Thank God for some backup <laughs> music and filler, or whatever. But uh, we thank you for in hopefully enjoying our little test stream. We would like to know if you know we can stand a second show on a Sunday. Let us know. Obviously, we have some technical and a few issues to work out, but we will be back soon. Maybe not next Sunday. Maybe we had some stuff to work. We'll, we'll see it. But uh, thank you for joining us on this test stream because we are playing simply second edition. Good night, everyone. Night, night. <laughs>